PlayOnSports.com. It's the PlayOnSports.com pregame show live from Owen Owens Field in Concord, California. I'm Michael K. Smith, also known as Mike on the Mic, alongside Tim Fitzgerald on your destination for high school sports, PlayOnSports.com. Tonight's matchup features the visiting Pittsburgh Pirates against the host De La Salle Spartans, kind of like the Cowboys and Niners of the Bay Area, if you will, always meeting up in the playoffs. Pittsburgh comes into tonight's game with an overall record of 8-3, and three, while the home team, De La Salle, is a perfect 10-0. and zero. And Pittsburgh comes into this game on a hot streak. They've won their last four, all on the road, and the, last, uh, the latter of the wins, probably the best of them all, getting revenge from a loss in which they were blown out earlier in the season against Monta Vista. They lost 44-14 to earlier on in the regular season, and they came back last week at Monta Vista and beat them 55-29. to So, you know, Pittsburgh getting blown out at home, that was embarrassing, but then playoffs come around. 9-8 matchup is usually always going to be the most intriguing matchup. Two evenly placed teams. Monta Vista had been slumping coming into the game, and Pittsburgh uh, took advantage of that and exposed their weaknesses. And and even without, uh, you know, Jamal Lockett, who has been huge to this team throughout the year, a 1,000-yard rusher, he's hurt. And uh, in steps Harris Ross, and what a game he had. He Harris sure Ross did. going off for 269 yards Four last week. Four touchdowns with that. Big game. Yeah. Impressive. Yeah. Last week. Pittsburgh led 26 to nothing after the first quarter, in control of that thing from early on. And like you said, Michael, here we go again with these two. They met in last year's semifinals where De La Salle had a one by halftime, pretty much 48 to nothing. Pittsburgh has been eliminated by De La Salle 10 times since upsetting the Spartans in that 91 title game. Six of those have come in NCS title games, including 08 and 09. This Pittsburgh team can really score. It can really run the ball. I expect them to put up a good fight in this one. They had a sluggish start to their season, but finished strong. They're averaging 36 points a game, allowing 26. And like you said, they're hot right now over their last five games, averaging 44 points a contest. And meanwhile, what can't you say about De La Salle? <laughs> De La Salle, a perfect 10-0 and undefeated mm-hmm. record. First round by last week meant that they got to get healthy. Sure did. And that was key for them, especially with... Do it all guy, Andrew Buckley, a guy they really needed banged up for the last couple of weeks of the regular season. He's a receiver, he's a punter, he's a punt returner, kick returner, quarter or safety. He really does it all. And he's been around the block, as has Tia Pepe Vitali. Daz Tatalatasi returns from last year. Of course, the big story about De La Salle. All their linebackers should be going to Division I yeah, colleges. Yeah, Most notably, Michael Hutchings going yep. to USC, Victor Egu. Going to, to California. Yep. Austin Hooper can really choose where he wants to go. He has yeah. a ton of offers. We'll get to that tonight. They did the coin toss. We don't know in which who is going to receive and who is going to kick. It looks as if De La Salle will De kick Salle off to start off. this game. Pittsburgh in the white tops, orange pants. And just get you to calpreps.com. Predict the score before we start this one. They're saying De La Salle 42 17. What do you that's, think, Tim? That's what I've been seeing too. A lot of expecting that. I think if that score does come to fruition, something like that, it won't be until later in this contest. It won't be until the third quarter we see some separation. We're going to see De La Salle on defense first. That's the side of the ball I'm most impressed with with this team. They've allowed 14 points or less in all but two games. They're averaging only 12 points allowed in games and just 62 rushing yards per game. This, that's the def- the difference between these two teams is the stellar defense And that's of the De difference LaSalle. every year. It's yep. just De La Salle's defense is that much better than the rest of the Bay Area's, the rest of Northern Cali- California's, yep. and for the last couple years, all of California. De La Salle to kick off here at home. Pittsburgh will take it from about their own five-yard line. A nice return up the middle gets Pittsburgh out to just short of their own 25-yard line. Returning the kick was Harris Ross. We talked about him. He has really come on yeah. in the last couple of weeks. Harris Ross has been huge. <coughs> Through the first eight games of the season, only 38 carries for 339 yards and two touchdowns. And in two games, <laughs> 32 carries, 506 yards, and six touchdowns. Yep, 828 on the season now after that burst. So here is Pittsburgh onto the field. The first play is a run. They said they're going to do a lot of that. Vic Callie was talking to BayPreps.com. 
and was saying they're just going to stick to their formula of what's gotten them to this point, and that is run the ball. No secret there. And it's no secret that De La Salle stops their run Mm -hmm. for very little yardage. That was what we picked up from both of the coaches when we spoke to. That was kind of the theme is each of them playing their game, executing their style of ball, and they felt very confident that that would lead to a victory for them. And for both teams, it's very similar. similar. They're both going to run the ball and try to play the best defense they can. Here on second down, Pittsburgh's going to pass. It's a screen pass set up for the wide receiver, that being Xavier Crawford, the junior do-it-all guy. He's kind of like the Andrew Buckley for the Pittsburgh squad. And once again, De La Salle, good read. Gets in the backfield and makes a tackle early, not allowing Crawford to get anywhere. All over that quickly. Didn't get a chance for the lineman to set up the little bubble around around Alexander. Or rather, uh, Xavier Crawford. As for Pittsburgh, their starting quarterback is Lorenzo Renteria. A senior who's done a really good job of not turning the ball over. And on a third and long... Pittsburgh getting a pretty good run from their junior, Harris Ross, who is tripped up just shy of the first down marker. We'll see if Pittsburgh elects to go for it. It should be fourth and short. They're going to move the sticks. It is a first down. He is right at the marker. So Harris Ross, run. yeah, right at the marker there. Yeah, they uh, passing down, fooled him with a run. A nice draw up the gut. Caught to De La Salle a little off guard there. As I mentioned, Lorenzo Renteria running the offense as a senior. To his disposal in the backfield will be Harris Ross, the junior, and Crajon Menefee, senior. Jamal Lockett, a thousand yard rusher this year, hurt. Should see some time, however. Gut. And another big run! I believe it's Harris Ross once more. No, this time it's Crajon Menefee that gets Pittsburgh out beyond the 50 into De La Salle territory, but Menefee comes up limping after yeah. the run there, Tim. Yeah, and he's been banged up for a little bit. That was quite the run, though. A fullback dive, again fooling De La Salle. Crajon Menefee. Kind of their own, taste of their own medicine there. Quick getting the ball before the defense can react. So now already into De La Salle territory. This is exactly the start they needed. And whistles blow here. Got a flag. Delay, perhaps. No, an illegal substitution. So an illegal substitution call against Pittsburgh will back them up Mm. about five yards, and it'll be first and 15. Must have been a little confusion with Menifee having to come out. Crajon Menifee with that big run for the first down. Coming into this game, 81 carries for 521 yards and 14 touchdowns. I formation this time with the lone receiver out to the far right side. The give goes to Harris Ross, finding his way, slipping through the gaps along the right side of the offensive line. It comes close to bringing the ball back to the original line of scrimmage. Yeah, gains about four on that one. He does a great job of making himself skinny and wedging his way through the hole. Yeah, he does. And then once he gets through those holes, he really explodes. Absolutely. Good, good, good speed. Some other starters for Pittsburgh, their receivers will be number six, Corey Alexander, a senior, and number two, Xavier Crawford, a junior. You'll also see Zach Hansen in there in multiple formations. He's number 18, and he is a senior. Second and long for the Pittsburgh Pirates. This time run to the left side. Wow. Harris Ross. He is moving. Gashing the De La Salle defense for a big-time gain. Moves the sticks. Another first down picked up for Pittsburgh. And they're having a really wonderful first drive here to the game. They sure are. It is unexpected the way they're able to open up some big running lanes here so far. And that's the key to this team is their offensive line. Four of them receiving all league honors. We'll get you that line in just a second here. First and ten. Give once again to Harris Ross. Right side. And Ross picks up about four or five yards there. Gets the ball out to the De La Salle 30-yard line. So to tell you about that line, first off, the tight end is Mote Maile, a senior. And then the line from left tackle to right tackle is Rene Cardona, a junior, Larry Santa Cruz, junior, Brandon Moore, senior, Antonio Huey, a senior, and D'Angelo Powell, a junior. And here on second and five, it's another run up the middle. So Vic Galley serious in his stance to run the ball 
against De La Salle. De La Salle finally got some penetration on that one, able to disrupt it before he was able to get to the lane. Still a two-yard pickup for the Pirates. Yep. But like I said, that offensive line, three to five guys juniors, so they're going to be around next year as well. A very Ooh. potent offensive line that's going to stick around in Pittsburgh. Third and three, mm. and this time nowhere to run. Went to the well for, one too many times. I believe times. Harris Ross. Yep. Yeah, but number 17, Michael Hutchins on the stop. He just blew in right in through the defense, put a shoulder on, on Hutchings, Harris Ross. the highly sought-after and touted prospect yeah. for De La Salle in the top 100 of some scouting services, and he will be attending Pittsburgh the University going of for Southern it. California. Pittsburgh will go for it here on 4th and 3. Ball at the De La Salle 28-yard oh. line. And the running back runs into his offensive lineman yeah, in an attempt to get away from the pressure from De La Salle on their run defense and couldn't get anywhere after he bumps into his offensive line. And I believe it was Harris Ross once yep. again. Penalty against Pittsburgh will be an illegal motion. The call is declined. The penalty is declined, which means De La Salle will, turn, uh, will take the ball over on downs. Taken over on downs. Pittsburgh tried to set up the power eye and run right. Just couldn't get the, the lane that they had been creating. De La Salle bending but not breaking. Showing the tough defense here just outside of the red zone. And so now the De La Salle offense will come onto the field for the first time tonight. They will run a veer offense. Makes the quarterback, Chris Williams, really have to react quickly throughout the entire game. It's really up to him to decide whether he should hold on to the ball or hand it off. And here on the first play, he hands it off for only a gain of a yard. Chris Williams, only a junior, replacing last year's starting quarterback, Bart Houston, who is going to be play, or is playing at the University of Wisconsin. He was one of the top three quarterbacks in all of the Bay Area last year. Really had them all in the same league with him, Lockie and Zach Klein, Lockie of Monta Vista, Klein of San Ramon Valley. And this time, it's they fake the run to the left side, and they throw over the middle to Austin Hooper. Hooper trying to break away from a tackler. And drags the defender all the way down to the Pittsburgh 20-yard line. The tight end seam route works to perfection for De La Salle. Williams to Hooper for a huge game. It was fake the dive and then hit the pop pass down the middle. The seam route to the big tight end after the linebackers were drawn into the play fake. Well executed. So just like that, De La Salle. Deep within Pittsburgh territory. It'll be first and 10 from the Pittsburgh 18-yard line. Williams getting under center. And will hand it off to... Vitali. Tia Pepe Vitali there on the right side. Vitali, a senior, was on last year's State Bowl Open Championship team for De La Salle as they defeated Westlake Village. And so was there. So was their other running back, who was only a junior this year, was on De La Salle last year as a sophomore. That being Daz Tatalatasi. They will be the two running backs behind Williams tonight. Second and six for the Spartans. And once again, handoff right side. This time it's to Tatalatasi, mm -hmm. and Tatalatasi pushing the pile forward. Might have gotten into the end zone. Real close. He kept it that pile moving. Got Lyman helping it going, and kept his feet churning too. Very close. Going to be just short. They're going to mark him. Boy, it looks like the half foot line there, the half yard line. And that'll get the band fired up, who is just in front, just behind the end zone in which De La Salle is trying to score in. They added those seats to the north end zone. Got a timeout, De La Salle. All right, so De La Salle will take a timeout. With four minutes and 53 seconds left in the first quarter, a scoreless game here from Owen Owens Field on the campus of De La Salle High School in Concord, California, here on PlayOnSports.com. Do you want to watch more of your school's great matchups like the game you are enjoying here tonight? Tell your school to sign up for the Play On Sports school broadcast program. The program allows schools to broadcast all of their games and other activities on the web. For more information, Go to playonsports.com slash SBP. All right. 
Thank you, Tim. As I mentioned, these two teams very familiar with each other. Michael, what did you think of Pittsburgh going for it on fourth down there just outside the 30? You think that was the right call at you the know, time? I, yeah, it's definitely uh, they too, kinda have to, too but deep, it's risky. too deep for a kick. I yeah. mean, Saldana hasn't really proved himself yet. Yeah, He's still only a junior yep. as a kicker. And, you know, De La Sa- or Pittsburgh is very confident. Their coach, Vic Galley, we didn't get to talk to him before the game, but I've known him personally. Very confident coach. Yeah, and he, he was feels happy to see that, he, he feels that he has talented athletes to get the job done. So why not? Good call. And De La Salle back from He's the in. break here on first Vitale. and goal from the one-yard line, and they punch it in with Pepe Vitale. De La Salle strikes first. Powerful drive sandwiched in between was the, the big pass to the tight end down the middle, setting up the great field position. That power run game, what a one-two punch they have at running back. And now the extra point try for De La Salle. It'll be Tyler Duncan to attempt the kick. And it is good. And so De La Salle takes the early lead here with four minutes and 49 seconds left to go in the first quarter. Seven to nothing. Getting back to my point of these two teams and their familiarity. They have met seven times in the last seven seasons. As Tim alluded to, in 2008 and 2009, both times for the North Coast Section Division I Championship game. Last year, it was a third-round semifinal in which they met up, and De La Salle won 48 to nothing. Vitali in that game, 14 carries for 108 yards and three Mm -hmm. touchdowns. His biggest run of the night was a 29-yarder. Some other key guys that that played a role in that win for De La Salle that are on this team this year, DJ Moffitt, a linebacker. He had a rushing touchdown of 16 yards to go with three solo tackles. And Andrew Buckley, the junior, was a key punter. He had three punts for 110 yards. His longest punt was a 49-yarder. Duncan with a shallow kick this time, taking it about the seven-yard line from Pittsburgh. And there's some room to run around the left side after breaking a couple tackles. It is Lockett on the return. Wow, what an explosive return, man. And so Jamal Lockett... (laughs) Falls to the ground after the return. Hopefully he is okay. He does appear to be in some pain, but is back but up But Jamal on his Lockett feet. really having to do a lot on that return yeah. in order to shake away tackles. There was some open room for him to run, but just a phenomenal return by Jamal Lockett, who has been fighting injuries throughout the season. Like I said, sure has been a do-it-all guy for Pittsburgh. 1,272 yards rushing. Receiving, he is also uh, hasn't really played too much of a part there, but just really his 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 breakaway speed and athleticism, and we hope he's okay. And, and that's Harris re- Ross here on the first play, going towards the left up the middle. That really is the only weak link for De La Salle so far this season. Has been some special teams play issues on kickoff return coverage more than anything. Yeah, Lockett with five returns for 278 yards couple scores. His longest one was a 98-yarder return to the house. Mm -hmm. So Pittsburgh right back in De La Salle territory again. Second and seven for the Pirates, and it's Renteria keeping it himself, doing a good job of bootlegging with that one to the right side, keeping it himself and picking up a first down and more. And Tim, that's one of the things I was noticing watching the highlight film on Lorenzo Renteria before this game. He is very good at the ball fake when he wants to keep it himself. Uh, You know, he's really caught a lot of defenses off guard. They think it's going to the running back, but instead the quarterback has himself, picks up huge yardage. That was a great fake. Got himself out in the perimeter on the bootleg and made a very smart decision not to throw that ball. Both his primary receivers were covered. Big run up the middle. A receiver split out to each side, but that doesn't matter as the fullback punches it in straight up the gut. And this time it's Krajan Menefi. Wow. Another big running lane. Very surprised. But this offensive line, like you said, Michael, full of, full of stars in the making, really. Experienced guys who will still be here for a minute. Opening, opening up some big run lanes for Pittsburgh so far. And for Menifee, that was a 25-yard gallop to the house. For the score for Pittsburgh, untouched. Yeah, untouched pretty much till he got to the goal line. Saldana to attempt the extra point. Mm, flag down. 
Mm. And it'll be a false start against Pittsburgh, so they will have to make this try a little bit more difficult now, especially without a, an experienced kicker. So we'll see what if Saldana can make the extra point try here. Like I said, five yards pinned back to that for the false start. Snap good, hold down, kick Nailed up, it. and the kick is good. And so just like that, we have a tie ball game here in Concord. Seven all between the Pittsburgh Pirates and the De La Salle Spartans. I'm really impressed with the way Pittsburgh has come out. Definitely no intimidation factor for them. When we talked to their coaches out on the field beforehand, they wanted this game, and they knew it from the day the season started. They have to go through De La Salle. They are pumped up for this contest. Well, I mean, if, if, if any team is not going to fear De La Salle, it's this definitely it. the Pittsburgh Pirates. The familiarity with the teams. They played each other a lot during the streak. Mm -hmm. Pittsburgh always came up on the wrong side of those. But the streak started after a loss to Pittsburgh in the 1991 North Coast Section Championship game. And so every time Pittsburgh plays De La Salle, there's always that hope that Pitt can do it again. They could be the yeah. first team, since they did it themselves, to beat De La Salle. As no Northern California team has figured it out, there no. have been... A couple teams that have tied De La Salle, but no one since 1991 has yeah. can say that they have beaten the De La Salle Spartans. Yeah, some out-of-staters have pulled it off. Even those are rare. And it is that is a big deal that that is in the back of their head. Hey, we're the Pittsburgh Pirates. We're the last ones to do this. We could do it again. These two teams so synonymous with each other. We'll talk about how the various ways that they are, but... The white, black, and orange versus the green and silver. A squib bouncer taken by the De La Salle Spartans at their own 10-yard line. And it's Alan Marion returning to kick for Sparta. And is disappointed with his return as he thought he was going to be able to break a tackle. Putting on some moves there trying to juke a Pittsburgh Pirate kickoff man. But Pirates stood strong and... Made the open field tackle, and so Marion gets the ball out to the 28-yard line for De La Salle. Twins look to the left. Hand up mm. off the middle, and to the left goes Tia Pepe Vitali in the I formation this time. A little bit of a different look for De La Salle. They're normally used to running that pro split veer. Boy, senior Ron Johnson, number 84, had a shot at him in the backfield, too. It just missed that tackle. These are the plays you have to make if you want to beat De La Salle. The wide receivers tonight for De La Salle are going to be Andrew Bluckley, number 22, and number 25, Austin Lone Star, or Austin Hooper, with Victor Egu as a tight end. This time, twins to the right here, second and two after the eight-yard pickup by oh, the, keeper. the running back. And this time, it's a keeper for De La Salle. It's Chris Williams finding a huge seam. Up the middle and towards the left hash marks. We do have a flag down back at the De La Salle 30. And so this run in danger of coming all the way back. Chris Williams invisible on that run, just as was mm. Harris Ross in the run, that, or Krejshaw Menifee in the run that scored for Pittsburgh. Yep. No one saw Chris Williams. Illegal motion, the call on De La Salle. That will back them up. And so a huge run negated. Or an illegal formation, not on the line of, not enough men on the line of scrimmage. And that is the one thing I have noticed looking back at all of De La Salle's games. Almost each one, they have had more penalties than their mm. opponents. So, you know, for all the talk of De La Salle being so, you know, traditionally strong. Loss for De La Salle. So once again, De La Salle tries a different wrinkle, trying to add something beyond their traditional running. They line up with a direct snap to one of their running backs who cannot handle the snap. It is a rather damp night here mm -hmm. in Northern California. Has been raining steadily. Not raining at the moment, yep. but you never know when that can come back on. And so now third and 20 for De La Salle. Williams having to pass, and the Deflected. ball is tipped and mm -hmm. nearly picked off. By Marcel Underwood of the Pittsburgh Pirates. And so their defense, that was the question mark coming into this game. Will their defense rise to the task of their opponents? And so far tonight, 
hasn't been all too bad. Yes, they have surrendered a score, but they come up there that time stopping De La Salle. Right. I believe that was uh, Noah Palega that makes this stop here, or makes a deflection, rather. That ball hung up in the air for a second. Could have been intercepted. De La Salle tried that seam route to the tight end again. This time, Pittsburgh ready for it. De La Salle shifting into their pump formation. Fourth and 20, punt mm. nearly blocked as Pittsburgh with some good coverage getting into the backfield to disrupt the punter, but that good punt. is Andrew Buckley, and he does get off a pretty good punt. Fair catch called for by Xavier Crawford at the Pittsburgh 38 or 37 yard line. That was a field tipper right there. They really needed that, De La Salle did. Andrew Buckley, who has been a solid punter all year round for De La Salle before getting hurt. You know, you talked about the, the similarities between these two schools. And, of course, that all starts with Pittsburgh's head coach, Victor Galley. Yeah, Victor Galley, who was a former player for De La Salle. Ooh, what a tackle on the sweep to the right side. Number 47 in on a stop. Great solo tackle. DJ Moffitt again. DJ Moffitt. A guy for De La Salle who is getting a lot of looks from some Division I schools. Some of those include Arizona, Colorado, Colorado State, Houston, UNLV, Utah, and Washington State. Some nice choices. Those are all schools that he's gotten offers from. I formation here for Pittsburgh on a second and 11. And it's Crajan Menifee. Dive right up the middle. More positive yards. They're doing a good job of neutralizing De La Salle's defensive tackles. Breaking tackles, too, by Menifee. Showing some strength. And let's talk about De La Salle's defense. Austin Hooper and Victor Igu, two stellar tight ends, also will play defensive end. The tackles are Sumner Houston and Xavier Banks. Houston, a junior. Third and three now for the Pirates. Once again, eye formation, and it's Menifee. Getting past some leg tackle tries by De La Salle and brings the ball just past midfield and into De La Salle territory at the Spartans logo there. Ooh, he was one tackle away from breaking that thing for a long game. Victor Igu's helmet comes off and so he will come to the sideline for a breather. Cameron Lisserog on the tackle. He is a sophomore at the linebacker position for De La Salle. Big stop. Otherwise, he might have been gone. Him and Michael Hutchings will control the middle of the field. Already talked about Michael Hutchings going to USC. The outside linebackers will be Dasman Tatalatasi and DJ Moffitt. And right now, the referee is calling for a change in the clock here on the scoreboard at Owen Owens Field. Standing room only tickets for some people just along the southern end zone. Just 13 seconds showing left in this first quarter right now. So De La Salle with a fresh set of downs, or Pittsburgh with a fresh set of downs after Menifee with a bruising run along the right side. Getting the ball past midfield. It'll be first and 10 for the Pirates at the De La Salle 49 yard line clock. Reset to 25 seconds, there and now go. it's a running clock. Renteria trying to get things going with his offensive lineman, now set under center. Hands it off, and it is... Menifee again. Menifee once again, breaking tackles left and right on the left side, getting pushed out of bounds, and Crajan Menifee. He broke at least four tackles on that run, Michael. Impressive tackle breaking. Keeps his legs churning. Even when it looked like De La Salle had wrapped him up well, arms around his legs, he just keeps pumping his thighs and then broke out the stiff arm to break the last tackle for the big run. Crushing De La Salle with power is Crajan Menifee. Left, right, up the middle, it doesn't matter. He's yeah. been running the ball well tonight. And like you said, is. Just been bursting off of tackles. First and 10 now for the Pirates at the De La Salle 17-yard line. This should be the last play of the first quarter. It's a run to the right in which De La Salle quickly wrangles it up. Tried Harris Ross that time. Looked like number 18. 
Got in on the stop for, for De La Salle, Austin Hooper. And so uh, a highly a highly contested contest here. Both We've teams battling it Michael. out. Oh, yeah, they, they, are, <laughs> they are fighting it out here in Concord. That will end the first quarter. Scored with a tie score, 7-7 between the De La Salle Spartans and the Pittsburgh Pirates. Play on Sports is on Facebook and Twitter, giving you news and information and links to great highlights. Follow us at Play on Sports on both Facebook and Twitter. You can also access thousands of live and on-demand games on YouTube at youtube.com slash playonnetwork. Keep up with all the high school action every week. From your destination for high school sports, playonsports.com. All right. Thank you, Tim. De La Salle 7-0 versus Pitt in the last seven years. Tied for the third best record versus a single opponent in that time period. With San Ramon Valley and Cal for De La Salle. They're 9-0 against Foothill and Monta Vista. That's the only better record. De La Salle has outscored Pitt 281-71 to in that time span. This is since the streak was snapped. 30 points has been the average margin of victory for De La Salle versus Pitt. The closest game was in 2004. De La Salle winning 35-14, to only by 21 points. <laughs> and De La Salle has had at least one 100-yard rusher in each of the last four meetings versus oh. Pittsburgh. Look at that. They tried a wide receiver screen and then a pass off of it. Xavier Crawford showing the lefty toss. Threw it behind his intended receiver, though. Yeah, Xavier Crawford that. not able to complete the pass. Yeah, he trying to go to Corey Alexander one. there. Yeah. He is one for one on the season with an 11-yard touchdown pass. Tried it there. Drops him down to one for two on the air. So that incompletion will make for third and long now for Pittsburgh. Not sure if that was the time to pull out some trickery after powering your way down the field, but looking to catch De La Salle off guard. Tough to do that, though. Only one receiver out there for the Pirates as Renteria will hand the ball off to Menifee. It's only about a gain of four, maybe three on the play. Menifee making something out of nothing on yeah, that run. They really, really disrupted the Pittsburgh linemen from being able to get downfield. The De La Salle D linemen getting low and, and making sure the Pittsburgh linemen couldn't get downfield to make their blocks. Decision time here for Vic Galley, and he is going to line up for a field goal try. And a kick. It'll be a 34-yard attempt for the Pirates. Antonio Saldana, now This the is uh, Iniguez. Is it 37? It is. Oh, and oh, it's blocked. It is Iniguez who comes out to attempt the field goal try, and it is blocked. Leading the charge on the block for De La Salle was number 32. Boy, he really whipped in there. Strong special teams play. Is that Kevin Griffin? Sure that is was. Kevin Griffin, the starting quarterback, a junior, 6'1". 180 pounds. De La Salle buckling down in the red zone again. Showing that stout D. And so a turnover on downs. Second one tonight for Pittsburgh. Second time tonight for Pitt. And so the De La Salle offense hoping that it can be third time's a charm for their offense. First possession they scored drove down the field with a big pass it was that picked up the most yardage on that drive a pass from Williams to his tight end Austin Hooper and then it was finalized with a one yard punching from Pepe Vitale and on their previous drive they stalled and they it did. was Pittsburgh's defense that came up large nearly intercepting a pass and having Forcing De La Salle to have to punt the ball deep from within their own territory. First and ten for the Spartans at their own 17-yard line. Williams keeping it himself on the veer option read. And finds a hole up the middle and will pick up the first down. Just lowering his head and shoulders there towards the end of that run. Trying to finish it off with a boom is the junior quarterback, Williams. He moves the sticks for De La Salle. Great read by him. He saw the middle was open. Shuffled his feet just enough. Kept him moving. Enough shimmy to shake through some defenders before, like you said, lowering the boom to finish the run. First and 10 now for the De La Salle Spartans at their own 35-yard line. Line is set. 
and it's Williams faking the run and then throws a quick pass, quick fade pass to his running back there. Yep, that's number 25. That's Austin Lomsar, actually one of his receivers that was lined up in the slot. A quick fade route, go up and get it for Austin Lone Star. 6'1", 182 pound senior, makes the catch and extends the sticks once again. Another first down and actually extends the ball into Pittsburgh territory. Yeah. And now De La Salle, very quick paced here on their offensive charge. First he had, and 10. He had Corey Alexander beaten there. And it's Vitali getting the carry left side. Nice stop by number 59, Antonio Huey. Antonio Huey making the tackle. And hasn't he had senior. a great year? Yeah, he yeah. is a co-MVP of the BVAL. Him along with Darrell Daniels, who has been a phenomenal athlete to watch. Huey, 6'2", 280. Williams in a shotgun set this time. This play never happened, though. We got another offensive penalty on De La Salle. False start again. 9.49 left in the second quarter, and we've had, what, four procedural penalties on offensive plays by De La Salle? Like I said, they have created a, or they have, yeah, they have created a lot of penalties this year. So that sets up a second and 13, second and 13. Trying to see if I can find all of their penalty numbers. I'll have to yeah. add them up at the break. But, yeah, they have definitely committed a lot of penalties in this one. Not too costly, but costly enough as it backs them up some yards. And Looks like they're about to burn their second time out of the evening, too. And they will burn their second time out of the evening. This one coming with 9 minutes and 24 seconds left before halftime. Set up in a shotgun three wide there. Didn't like what they saw, I guess. But let's take a look at the penalties for De La Salle, starting with their season opener against Bellarmine. That was a game in which they lost. Well, actually, they tied the penalty battle in that one. They each had three penalties in that one against Mullen of Denver. They had four penalties compared to seven, so they won that one. But watch, you're going to start to see it's going to be a trend for De La Salle. That they do not win much in the penalty battle. Certainly the case tonight. Pittsburgh playing a cleaner game at least. Just Against third. Foothill, seven penalties for 79 yards. Ooh. Uncharacteristic. Well, back in that shotgun three wide again. They flip it to the wide side of the field though. Yeah, Williams in a shotgun, had Vitali to his right, gives it to Vitali on a delayed draw, and now Vitali making like his counterpart and bouncing off some would-be tackle attempts. Bursting through, just destroying would-be tacklers. Tackler. Started with Noah Pelega and then just bursting through the line, lowering, lowering the shoulder. And Vitali very close to first down yardage. It'll be third and in inches for the Spartans of De La Salle. Nice shotgun draw there, but <laughs> Vitali made it work. This time Williams back underneath center with Vitali and Tatalatasi behind him. And it's a quick give. Actually, Keeper. no, the quarterback keeps a good misdirection there. I thought it was a give to Vitali, but instead it was Chris Williams keeping it himself. Option veer to the right side. Gets around his tackle. And picks up a first down and more. Shows how good he is at that read and, and the fakes. Fooling everyone on that play. Xavier Crawford, the tackle. I think he saves a touchdown on that one. That was a big tackle right there. Against Amador Valley, eight penalties for De La Salle compared to Amador Valley's two. Whew. Nine penalties against Monta Vista compared to the Mustangs, five. First and ten for De La at the mm. Pittsburgh 31-yard line. And another bruising run from Pe Pepe Vitale. Yeah, more broken tackles behind the line. Some pep in his step. I'll say. For Vitale. Got good blocking on the perimeter, too. And Boom. picks up eight yards, two yards shy of the first down. Just to continue my point, looking at the San Ramon game. San Ramon had six penalties compared to De La Salle, seven. And in the Concord game... De La Salle 
did win the penalty battle there. They had three compared to Con Conquer or California's five. And here on second and two for Sparta. And the ball was at the pit 23-yard line. And that is where the ball will stay. No gain picked up on the run. It'll be third and two now. Pittsburgh's been in De La Salle's backfield often. But the De La Salle runners breaking tackles. Pittsburgh can't keep blowing these opportunities to make stops behind the line. I like the look of the near near far formation from the De La Salle running backs. Twin receiver look here, left side, and the give goes to Vitali. Pelega, nice stop. This time, two stops in a row when they've made first contact. And Pepe will come up just short of the first down. So now Coach Ladd has a decision to make of his yep. own. Fourth and two they're looking at. It's really about fourth and one and a half. Yep. It's a very short two to have to pick up. Fully expect them to go for it here. Ball at the Pittsburgh 22-yard line. They converted with a Chris Williams keeper the last time around. And this time we'll see what they pull off. Receivers split far to each set. And it is a fullback dive up the middle. Vitali en route to, an end, to the end zone for a score, but the flags do come out. They marked him down about the six-yard line, but we're going to see what these flags are, if this is a hold or perhaps a face mask. Preliminary signal is a face mask on Pittsburgh. And so a penalty this time goes against Pittsburgh, which mm -hmm. has been a rarity tonight. A face mask call against the black and orange. So and so De La Salle will keep the run and then have some yards added to it. Tack on half the distance of the goal. That's going to put it at the three-yard line. First and goal from the three-yard line. And if the Spartans can take the lead here, this is where I see them jumping back out on top and maybe not seeing their lead tied for the rest of the night. Vitali trying to get into the end zone, spinning off his offensive lineman, in. and he is in for the score. Tia Pepe Vitali with his second touchdown tonight puts De La Salle back out on top. Great in individual effort by Vitali three times on this drive. Vitali with some great slashing dashing and gashing through this Pittsburgh defense. Picking up yards easily and now he'll have a seat on the bench and he deserves it. He sure has worked hard and with 5 minutes and 40, sec 40 seconds left before halftime, the De La Salle Spartans at home enjoy a 14-7 lead over the visiting Pittsburgh Pirates. PlayOnSports.com is not only your destination for Friday night football action, but it's also the place for the most comprehensive coverage of high school playoff and championship events in all sports from across the country. PlayOnSports.com, high school sports lives here. All right. Thank you, Tim. Tim Fitzgerald, my analyst tonight, Hans Webb, the videographer, and Zach Farmer doing the producing. I am Michael K. Smith, also known as Mike on the Mic. You can find me on Twitter at Mike on the Mike 24. You can hit me up at Timmy Fitz 76. Timmy Fitz 76. I like it. It rhymes. <laughs> yeah, that's. I did used to rap back in the day. Still got it. <laughs> me too. <laughs> Excellent. We're gonna have to do a do some sort of collaboration yeah. post game. Yes, post game. <laughs> De La Salle's uniforms always been one of the most classic looks. The forest green tops. White numbers outlined in silver. Actually, solid white numbers this year. The gray stripes along the shoulders, the triple stripe with the gray on the outsides, four screen in the middle. Short kick allows the Pittsburgh returner to have to come up to return it, run up to return it, actually. And then he is brought down relatively quickly, or relatively quick by the De La Salle kickoff coverage. Yeah, unit. that was Palega handling the high hanger. 
Gets out to about the 31. And so can Pittsburgh respond? They did the last time yep. when De La Salle scored and went on a nice drive, a lengthy drive. And they scored quickly, a couple runs, and they were into the house. It'll be Xavier Crawford, the receiver, near side towards us in the booth. He's the only receiver. Offset eye formation for Pittsburgh. And Michael Hutchings, helmet comes off, and that doesn't distract him at all <laughs> as he easily wraps up the, t uh, the running back there for Pittsburgh, who is down to a knee and is yet to get up. I believe that's Crajan Menifee, yeah. who came up limping earlier in this game. After a couple big runs. And yeah, after a big kick return. Still showing some ill effects of that. And now he's going to need help to get off the field. Mm. Could be a big blow for Pittsburgh because he is their best player tonight. That is for sure. Yeah, that is really bad news for Pittsburgh. Now they're going to have to rely on Ross. Mm -hmm. With Jamal Lockett being out as well. Or not 100%. Not he can't play tonight and has played here and there. He had a big kickoff return was then taken out after as he came up limping on that. That was who it was, yep. The tight end, Miley, in motion here. Oh. And he is used, or tried to have been used as a as a blocker. He had to try to get out there after his motion, run out there and, and protect for a wide receiver screen. But the pass was incomplete. Yeah, Renteria led him too far, threw that low and away. Xavier Crawford, the intended receiver, could not hold on to it. And so it'll be third and 11 for the Pirates at their own 30-yard line. The De La Salle defense has woken up. Sleeping Giant awake. Allen Marin keying in as there is no receivers to his side. Once again, Miele in a short motion for Pittsburgh this time. And it's Harris Ross right side and De La Salle having their defense in perfect position to make the tackle. It's Cameron Lisserog, the sophomore linebacker, he and charging hard, yep. along with DJ Moffitt to make the tackle on Ross. It'll be fourth and nine after the two-yard pickup for Pittsburgh, and they will have to punt the ball away. First really lackluster drive by Pittsburgh tonight. And Menifee checking out of this game could lead to more of them. First time in which... A drive did not get past midfield. Yep. And into De La Salle territory. It'll be Buckley and Marion, the returners for De La Salle. Someone rushing onto the field. Confusion for Pittsburgh, and they'll have to burn a timeout. That's going to be Underwood, who is laid onto the field for Pittsburgh. And Vic Galley, I'm sure, is not happy at the fact that he had to burn a timeout upset, there. Quite upset. Very upset. Vic Galley is one of those coaches who... Does not shy away from his emotions. He'll let you know when he's happy, and he'll definitely let you know when he's angry. So with the timeout, that gives me a chance to get back to the uniforms. Like I said, De La Salle with the triple stripes on the shoulders. Below that, the numbers resting just above the arms. Solid white numbers. The solid white names in the back. The silver pants with the triple stripe going down each side with the green on the outsides of the triple stripe and the white in the middle. And they have that same triple stripe combination running uh, running through the middle of the helmet with the white in the middle and the thin green stripes on the outside. And then on the sides of each, uh, on the sides, on each side of the helmet is the green Spartan logo with De La Salle written in a cursive font underneath it. And now a very loud let's go Spartans chant being urged on by the fans. A high snap. He and just getting off. off that punt was number 83. That's Tomas Salas who will punt the ball, have, has the punt duties tonight. A junior for Pittsburgh. And boy, did he get lucky. Yeah, great job by first of all handling the high snap. Then to sidewind kick that thing to get it out there yeah, and I force a say, fair catch. I, was, I should say his team got lucky because he really <laughs> yeah, made a phenomenal he a play. play. He didn't get lucky. He corralled that ball high in the air, brought it down, and just got the punt off. Yeah, his long snapper got lucky. <laughs> and he'll back De La Salle up and into pretty good territory, at least for Pittsburgh's defense. De La yeah. Salle will start from their own 29-yard line. It's his second good punt tonight. Rather, that's the second punt we've second good punt we've seen tonight. One from each team. 
De La Salle in the lead, 14-7. Williams going to pass here on the first play of this drive. Oh. A wide open Andrew Buckley, and he cannot make the catch. Wide the ball thrown open. just a bit behind him. A little behind him, but he should have caught that. If it hits you in the hands, you should catch that. Andrew Buckley, who's... You know, Ben Rusty, though, I mean, you know, yeah, he had the bye week to get ready, but he's been out of, you know, full-on game competition for a while. So I guess those things are going to yeah. are gonna happen. You just hate to see it what happen when he's so wide open yeah. there. It'll be second and ten for De La Salle. Receivers once again split to each side, and it's Williams keeping it himself. Wiggling for some room. Pelega and Ron Johnson combining on the stop again. Pelega has been busy tonight. And let's talk about that Pittsburgh defensive line. Mile and Ron Johnson, the defensive ends. Johnson replacing Chima on Yekwu. Yeah, that's a big loss for Pittsburgh. Who, because he is he is great at creating pressure on the quarterback. On Yekwu is a game time decision with a knee injury. It'll be a four-yard pickup for De La Salle, making a third and six. Williams looking to pass once again. A fade down the left side. Good coverage Great by coverage. Pittsburgh. Raymond Garcia all over that one. Perfect technical coverage there, forcing the receiver to the outside and staying step for step. Stride for stride was Garcia with Austin Dondonville, a junior receiver for De La Salle. And so now they're going to go four and out and punt the ball away. Trading punts. Didn't think we'd see that a after the way this game started and the big drives each team had. And this oh, and it goes off one of the up men. It's loose. A loose ball, and Pittsburgh will recover the fumble. Was there a fumble there? Either way, it's, never picked it's up their by, ball. Yeah, either way, yeah. you're right. It is going to be Pittsburgh's ball deep within De La Salle territory. Second sloppy snap on this rainy night. They it's, couldn't have asked for a better situation. Boy, I'll say. The rain has stopped, but that field is still wet. Even this nice, well-draining field turf here in De La Salle. Yeah, and despite De La Salle having towels to dry the ball off, it still gets wet. Yep. From having to be on the ground. Pittsburgh hit, recovering. Hit one of the three up men and dribbled off away from the punter to his right from there. The botched punt there. And so Pittsburgh will have it in great position at the De La Salle 17-yard line. I formation behind Renteria. Whoa. Renteria, Blown quick up. fullback drive to is that Menifee who's back on the field. Okay. And it'll be a timeout taken by Pittsburgh, which leaves them with only one more timeout remaining with two minutes, 22 seconds here in the second quarter. And it'll be a second down. So a bunch of twos. And guess what? Deuces uh, uh, are wild. Deuces are wild, and I'll tell you who else is wild. Tim Fitzgerald getting to another announcement. You got it. Check out the post-game show. Stay tuned for the PlayOnSports.com post-game show, where we will select our player of the game, as well as wrap up all the action from this ball game. That's coming up following the game on your destination for high school sports, PlayOnSports.com. Thank you, Tim. And speaking of sports, or Play On Sports and Thanksgiving... The two are combining for a Thanksgiving Day broadcast. Play on sports. We'll be covering the annual Turkey Day game tradition. It is the championship game for the San Francisco section. I will be giving you the play-by-play. -play. I'll be out there with Stephen Davies. We are excited to give you the call. It'll be Lincoln versus Mission in what should be a very exciting game at Keysar Stadium on Thanksgiving. Yeah, I'm excited to watch. I formation and the give... Actually, it's kept by the quarterback, Renteria. Once again, got me off guard with that beautiful fake. Yep. Faked it to Harris Ross, kept it himself along the right side yard, or, or sideline, or right side of the field. And it's a good thing he kept it because Xavier Banks had to give to the running back, wrapped up again. Renteria wrapped up after a very short pickup or a very small pickup of yards. He does pick up three yards on the run to the right side. And so it'll be third and seven for the Pirates at their own 15. Once again, the I formation. Oh, and the fumble. ball is loose. Harris Ross losing control of the handoff. Victor puts Agu. it on the turf, and De La Salle comes up with it. Victor Agu jumps on it. Sloppy, careless handoff right there. Golden opportunity for Pittsburgh to tie this thing up. 
and they lost it. Harris Ross, only a junior, makes a pretty big mistake, leaving De La Salle with some time here before the half. A minute 36, and believe me, they can strike in a hurry. So, Oh, yeah, we've seen it tonight. Let's see if they can make like the Saints and try to score as fast as they can. Williams will hand the ball off to Vitali. Left side towards us here in the booth. Pittsburgh, again with opportunities to make a stop in the backfield. They are getting penetration on De La Salle. 43, Mote Miley again with a shot at this. That's the second one, second tackle he's blown behind the line. They need to capitalize when they get good penetration. De La Salle backers just too fast. Yep. Running backs way too fast. A nine-yard pickup for Vitali. Second and one. It looks like some early movement here. Vitali would yep. have been off to the races again. The interior line looked like the left guard moved early that time for De La Salle. False start will make it second and six. Taking a look at some scores. Justin Siena up 20-7 to seven on St. Mary's in the second quarter. It is a scoreless game between Rancho Catati and Las Lomas. And Cardinal Newman up 26 to nothing on Encinal in the second quarter. Cal leading Foothill 14 to nothing as well. Pittsburgh show blitz and backed off. Run to the right side for the Spartans. And Pittsburgh's defense doing a good job of swarming to the ball. Once again, Antonio Huey in on the tackle. Yeah, when they swarm, they make the stops. They have to bracket in these De La Salle runners to, to bring them down. It's going to take more than one guy, apparently. Clock ticking down to 17 seconds left here in the first half. Will De La Salle just be content? It would appear that way, that this will be our halftime score. 14 to 7, something that I sure wouldn't have predicted. Only 14 points. They're making me the look good so far. Spartans. <laughs> Pittsburgh Pirates hanging in. Their contest with the De La Salle Spartans here. Second round semifinal matchup of the 2012 North Coast Section Division I bracket. And it's the De La Salle Spartans with a 14-7 lead over the visiting rival Pittsburgh Pirates. Halftime here upon us, and that is going to do it. We'll come back with the halftime show in just a couple minutes here on PlayOnSports.com, your destination for high school sports.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're here for the halftime show on PlayOnSports.com, your destination for high school sports. Owen Owens Field in Concord, California, on the campus of De La Salle High School. And the De La Salle Spartans lead by a very slim margin. A very close game here in Concord, California. 14-7 to is the score. And it could be tied. That's the craziest thing. This game could be tied right now had they not fumbled away an opportunity knocking on the doorstep of De La Salle. That being Pittsburgh. Yep. Pittsburgh had the ball really deep in De La Salle territory at about the De La Salle 17-yard line and could not capitalize, fumbling their chances away. I love this. I'm excited by this. I love a nice close game, especially when it's unexpected uh, and making the experts look a little silly. I, I have fun in these moments. <laughs> well, Pittsburgh was uh, a hot team coming they into are. this contest. They've showed that they can run the ball, although of late, De La Salle has done a good job of sniffing out the run and not letting it be as successful as it was for Pittsburgh in the early stages of the game. And It'll be a big deal as, as to whether or not Menifee gets on the field in this second half. De La Salle scores twice behind the legs of their star running back, Pepe Vitale. Mm -hmm. And for Pittsburgh, a run from their running back of their own, a huge touchdown 25-yarder from the junior Harris Ross. Or actually, it was Crazy Menifee, the senior, who scored the touchdown, and he came up limping late in the second quarter. So, sure did. And we did not see him on the field when uh, – Pitt capitalized, or when Pitt got the fumble and came back out for their last offensive possession, he was not on the field. Instead, it was Harris Ross. Yeah, and, and as, as hot David as Harris, Furman. as hot as Harris Ross has been, De La Salle was able to contain him, and it's, it just wasn't the same. Not the same explos explosiveness combined with the tackle breaking ability. And the that's going to be uh, that's going to be a big blow to Pittsburgh if he doesn't come back out for the second half. They'll have to adjust. They will have to adjust. Both both teams have looked pretty good, though. And they each have their own talented playmakers that could play at the Division One level. For De La Salle, the key has been really just shooting themselves in the foot. That's the, the penalties and some miscues here there, a drop pass. Otherwise, they could be in control of this game. For Pittsburgh, it's been missed opportunities to stop De La Salle drives when they've, they've penetrated through the line, had a shot at at one of the two-star running backs and haven't been able to bring them down. De La Salle's running backs are tough. Both of them tough to bring down. It takes gang tackles. It takes bracketing them in. But they need to do everything they can to make a stop when they can against a team like De La Salle. Yeah, De La Salle, a team that usually will at some point in time run away with this game. They have yet to do so here. It's kind of like what I thought. It, even if De La Salle does pull away and take control, the, the more... A little bit more talented team. I didn't think it would happen until sometime around the third quarter, and that's what we're looking at right now. This is one of the better Pittsburgh squads to go up against De La Salle in a long time. One of De La Salle's old league opponents when they were in the East Bay Athletic League for the last couple of years. This year they moved into the Freelance League. Them An and James Logan, yep. the only independent teams this year in the Bay Area. And Still cruise to 10-0. Yeah, still cruise to ten and zero. Got an automatic bid into the North Coast Section playoffs, and to talk about their league rival or their old league rival, the team that they played to end the season, that being the California High Grizzlies, and they are up twenty one to nothing on Foothill halftime in that one. Wow, being let but let known by our colleague at Boogeyman ninety nine, that being Brandon Mills, there in San Ramon to cover that game along with Stephen Davies. And Annalie and Campolindo, that game getting a little bit closer. It was 21-7. to Now it's 21-14. to Annalie still in control with 43 seconds left in the second quarter. They are trying to keep their perfect season alive. I'm really surprised Foothill isn't even on the board yet. That shocks me a bit. Well, Foothill's offense is slow to garner or to gain momentum. Yeah, they're, they're a little hit or miss, huh? Yeah, they are hit or miss. And it must be uh, Cal doing a good job of run defense because they will get a steady I'm sure they've gotten a steady dosage of running from both Griffith Gates Griffith Gates yep. and uh, Jameer Holland mm -hmm. and maybe Kearns hasn't been an effective tonight he's he might have right. I can't I can't speak for anything but maybe he's thrown some Hudson yet yeah maybe he's thrown some picks 
it's their their team and believe me I I really love you know watching Foothill I've called a couple of their games this year but they're a team where if what they're no, known for doing isn't successful on a given night it's going to be hard for them to come out with a win they 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 don't have much to adapt and change out to True. They, much they are, kind of are what they are. Yeah, yeah, they are what they are. And that's the way that uh, Coach Sweeney has instilled that team to be. Yeah. Yeah. Another his, team that is the way, way they are. for a long time. Yeah. And then, <laughs> well, that can't be more the case than the team we're watching here tonight. De La Salle, exactly. led by their head man, Coach Bob Latticer. Latticer with an impressive mark, 394, 23, and 5 overall. He has been the head coach of the De La Salle Spartans since 1979. They didn't have a winning season before he got here. And now ever since, they've been all winning seasons. They, Yeah, and now they're a powerhouse with their beautiful facility and rabid fans filling this place. It is packed and it is exciting tonight, even on a drizzly evening. A 93.2 winning percentage, the best out of any coach in high school football history. So, folks, we're going to take a break. That was our halftime show, capping the scores around the league and also showing how the scores were in this game. We'll be right back here on PlayOnSports.com. One match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're going to come at you. One shot at this. All right, folks, welcome back to Concord, California, here on the PlayOnSports.com presentation of the North Coast section quarterfinal matchup between the number eight-seeded Pittsburgh Pirates and the number one-seeded De La Salle Spartans. It is the De La Salle Spartans leading 14-7 to over their old... Long-time rival, the Pittsburgh Pirates. This is a rivalry that dates back to their days as members of the BVAL, the mm -hmm. Bay Valley Athletic League. And it seems as if every year they meet up in the playoffs, North Coast section playoffs. And offensive line coach for Pittsburgh telling us he knows that. He knows that the road to the North Coast section championship has to go through De La Salle. There's just no bones about it. Yeah, they come into this season knowing that. If they want to accomplish their goals, this is the route you have to go through, right through Concord here in De La Salle, home, home stadium. So much tradition just surrounds this program, this stadium. What I'm loving about 
two old rivals meeting up like they are. And really no love lost. But this has been a very clean game. No yeah. chippiness. Very fundamentally sound teams not losing their cool at any point. Well, I mean, you know what? You could tell that from pregame when uh, coaches from the other team, you know, from both De La Salle and Pittsburgh were very cordial with they each were. other. Yeah. No animosity, especially it's the type of familiarity. It's been friendly familiarity rather than animosity of any sort. Between Ken Simonton, who is now a coach at Pittsburgh, one of the all-time greats for the Pittsburgh Pirates, was a phenomenal running back in his day, went on to play at Oregon State, and then played in the NFL with Buffalo Bills and the 49ers, and he was chatted up with Terrell yeah. Ward, who is a coach for De La Salle, and Terrell Ward has been here along Lattice's side for a long time. His son, TJ Ward, an alum of De La Salle, mm -hmm. and a player in the NFL, a safety for the Cleveland Browns. Yep. I got to play against TJ Ward. You did? Yes, awesome. yes. He was on the De La Salle teams that we went against when I was a member of the Liberty Lions back in 2002 and 2003. That was a pretty good class. They had TJ Ward, Jackie Bates, who went on to play at Oregon, Hampton, and a little bit with the Kansas City Chiefs. Seeing Matt Gutierrez as a senior before he went on to Michigan in the NFL with the Patriots. And, of course... The headliner of those teams, number 21, Maurice Jones-Drew, MJD, yep. MJD, the human bowling ball. He sure was, and still is when that ankle holds up. There's always the debate back in Brentwood between who is the greatest De La Salle player we ever saw, and that one always comes down to Maurice Jones-Drew or DJ Williams. Mm. DJ Williams was such a force as a running back and a linebacker. Yeah, that's a tough call. I might side with MJD, I guess. Pittsburgh kicks off here to start the second half. De La Salle returning the kick, and they return it to just past their own 25-yard line due to Spartans. And so the green and silver go back onto the field, their first offensive try of the second half, and they look to really try to break this thing away. Latticer pacing the sidelines in his usual manner. Not a very... Excitable, emotional guys such as Vic Galley on the other sideline for Pittsburgh. Lad, just very reserved, very quiet. He lets his other coaches do the yapping. Very true. Mostly Coach Terry Edison, defensive coordinator for De La Salle, does all the talking for him in the interviews with the media. Lattister will talk to the Contra Costa Times after the game, but we got a an limping, injury here. Yeah, we got a limping Tayo Talatasi. No, is that Talatasi? It sure is, 21 coming off the field. Wow, so Daz Tatalatasi needing some help off the field, and that is a big injury for Dale South. So now you're starting to see injuries here on both sides of the ball yep. to key running now. backs. Key running backs, exactly, Michael. Twin look to the left for Dale LaSalle. Two backs behind Williams. The give is to Vitali, who bounces off a tackle and continues running to his left before being tackled for a short gain. Chris Williams has done a nice job of managing this game, making the right reads, the right choices. When we talked to their coaches, his quarterback coach, in fact, before the game, that was what he complimented him on. Managing the game, they talk about they'll probably open up the playbook for him next year. Three yard, right now, he's doing what he has to do. There's a screen. Three-yard pickup for Taylor Sal on the previous play, made for a second and seven. Receiver screen set up for Buckley, and Buckley... Will be lassoed out of bounds, but not before picking up the first down. Alexander and Chapman combining on that tackle there. Some big hitting to start this half already. And so that gets the cheerleaders in the band fired up. And De La Salle will now have the ball at their own 41-yard line. First and 10. Receivers once again on each side. Line is down. Williams fakes. He's in the backfield. Now passes the ball deep down the field for Buckley and overthrows his intended man. Good coverage that time as well by Pittsburgh. Had everybody covered. Had no choice but to try to take a shot too far. At least he put it where nobody could get to that thing. 
That is Michael Hutchings, number 17, filling in in the backfield as the other back right now. Yeah, he made a great the ball from time to time. He made a great blitz pickup right there, too. Kept Williams upright and able to at least chuck that thing away deep downfield. Talk about that Pittsburgh defense. The linebackers, Marcel Underwood, Noah Pelega, and Alan Chapman. Chapman and Pelega, under, or Pelega an underclassman as a sophomore. Williams, once again, nice play faking leg. it, keeping it to his right, bootlegging, and was showing some speed, getting around to the outside. Mm, they're going to call a hold on Hutchings here, though. He grabbed him from behind, sort of wrapped up the defensive back who was chasing Williams. So De La Salle will be pushed back after the holding call. Yeah, Hutchings, eight carries for 35 yards this year. So he's not completely foreign to being in the backfield, but you could tell that was, that was a mistake there of somebody not being used to getting out in space and blocking. It was a great play by De La Salle. Fake a sweep right, had the guards pulling, totally fooled Pittsburgh. At first, but a great recovery by the defensive backs. For Taylor Sal's offensive line, it looks like this from right tackle to left. David Ogburn, Jackson Lewis, Bernardo at left uh, right guard. Oswald, the center. Larry Allen Jr. at the left guard position. And Sumner Houston, the left tackle. Pittsburgh gets an easy uh, jump start there defensively. I don't see a flag at the moment. Williams keeps it himself, lowers his shoulder, and creates the boom along the far right side. Got real close to a first down. Looks like he's about a yard short. Good decision to tuck and run. Good Pittsburgh coverage there at that time. A familiar sounding name on De La Salle's offensive okay. line is Larry Allen Jr. Yes, he is the son yeah. of the Larry Allen offensive lineman that played for the Dallas Cowboys, the San Francisco 49ers. Rather, that's Williams getting back just short of the original line of scrimmage after that hold on the previous play. So still third and long, third and 11 here. Third and 11 for the Spartans. Buckley and Lone Star, the receivers here on the left side. More movement, more De La Salle penalties. Goodness gracious. And it looks to be another false start against De La Salle. The fans beside themselves here Whew. at Owen Owens Field with the fact that their team just continues to keep shooting themselves in the foot. Yep, one of the two flaws, the special teams and the penalties committed. So now it'll be third and 16. Expect a draw or a screen here. 16 yards needed to pick up the first down for the Spartans. Once again, Buckley and Lone Star, the receivers left side towards us here in the booth. Buckley split far out. Lone Star inside is a slot. Williams looking to the left for one of those receivers and finds Buckley who goes up with terrific hands and makes the grab and extends De La Salle past the 50-yard line and into Pittsburgh territory. What a tremendous catch there by Andrew Buckley. A great throw. Stepping into it was Williams, but phenomenal grab by the receiver. Sure was. He got open against a too soft of a zone by Pittsburgh. They, like myself, expecting... De La Salle to be content to try to get what they could and get rid of it, but that's not the De La Salle way. Going for it, getting aggressive. Nothing is unconvertible for them. And this time it's Hutchings who hovers over the right side of the line, finds some room, and picks up a healthy pickup of yards. Yeah, it appears to be barely a yard short, maybe a half yard short. Got almost right to the sticks. And Tatala Tossi is no longer on the sidelines. Whew. One's got to think if he's in the locker room getting tended to right now. Daz Tatala Tossi. Yeah, his right leg looked to be bothering him pretty badly as he limped off. Nine-yard pickup for Hutchings on the previous run. Second and one for the Spartans. And this time it's Vitali taking defenders with him. And route to a first down and more. Tackle breaking machine. Boy, just when it seemed like Pittsburgh was going to be able to force... De La Salle to get rid of the ball. The big third and 11 conversion. And now they are driving. Pittsburgh looking winded, a little deflated. And it looks like they're going to burn a timeout. Now we have an official timeout due to an equipment issue. For number six, Corey Alexander, a helmet problem. Seems to have it fixed. Must have been the old ear pad snapping, snapping out of place. 
Tia Pepe Vitali coming into this game. 195 carries and just under 1,500 yards running for an average of 7.65 yards per run. 19 touchdowns. And a run up the middle for De La Salle. And it's sniffed out by Pittsburgh. Yeah, they had a wall of defenders around that one. Ron Johnson, one of the guys to make to come in early on the tackle there. The defensive end in replacement of Chima Onyekwu. All right, looks like we got Tua Talatasi ready to check back in this thing. He's jogging. He's feeling good. And there he is, Talatasi back. So that's a good sign for the De La Salle Spartans. Second and seven now for De La Salle at the Pittsburgh 18-yard line. Williams looking He's to throw, and the ball is oh, in and out oh, of the hands oh. of the Pittsburgh secondary. He had Egu open in the end zone, but he bobbled it, and Xavier Crawford had a shot at picking this thing off, but he couldn't handle it either before it fell to the turf. And for Pittsburgh, it's... Number 77, D'Angelo Powell, slow to get up. Second team, all BBA lineman this year offensively. He defensively is. getting the start at D-tackle. Yeah, he is heading off under his own power at least. So we should should see him check back into this. On speaking of checking play, back I, in. And yeah, speaking of checking back in, Tatala Tossi's back in. And that's that gets the fans to clap it up a little bit. They're, they're sure happy to see their spectacular Junior back onto the field. Great job by Hutchings filling in, but it's a different beast when number 21 is out there. Third and seven. Ball at the Pittsburgh 18 yard line. Keeping. And it's Chris Williams. Fumble. Keeping it himself. Did he fumble the ball? Or will the ref say he was already down by contact? Ooh. They're going to say that. Okay. Pittsburgh did recover the fumble. Sure looked like it. He's just down after he recovers, though. Wow, big hit. Helmet to the ball. It was loose. And Xavier Crawford scooped it up. Big hit by the Pittsburgh D. Everyone kind of besides themselves right now on the field as to, especially De La Salle. This was definitely a live ball. This is definitely out. But they're, they're going to say he was down. And that was my initial call was that Williams was already down. Hmm. I did not see that. Still looked like he was up unless they ruled his forward progress stopped. So fourth down. Fourth because had seven. it been a fumble, you would have hated to see the refs blow it off early. Yeah, exactly. Pittsburgh got a chance to really streak down the sidelines and tie this game up. So instead they will rule that the quarterback, Chris Williams, for De La Salle was down. Before the ball came loose. Boy, big meaning call. Meaning fourth and seven now for the Spartans. Ball at the Pittsburgh 18. They're trying a field goal, which will be a 35-yard attempt. Junior Tyler Duncan. And the men in stripes have yet to officially get this game resumed. Now they do. And so here we are. Duncan, Tyler Duncan to attempt the 35-yard field oh, goal. Oh, boy. Another De La Salle staple, though. Hard counts on special teams. Getting Pittsburgh to jump off sides. Got to watch the ball there, Pittsburgh Pirates. De La Salle so disciplined in their nature. That's why the penalty problem is so surprising. Yes, it's very surprising. Because they are to a T with everything they do. Mm -hmm. Even outside of the football field. They're just a well-oiled machine. That's yeah. how I always describe them. Absolutely. Year in, year out, very solid. And that penalty will now make for a fourth and short, fourth and manageable. Just one. And now they're going to go for it. Yep, changes everything. Five yards does change everything, at least for the moment. We'll see if De La Salle can still convert. Williams. He's got it. Hands it off. Vitali. Vitali picks up the first down. Wow, what a sequence. The fumble that wasn't, then De La Salle. Great job of drawing Pittsburgh off sides on a hard count before what looked like they were going to attempt a field goal. And now a first down. It all comes down to the little things in a, in a game with two evenly matched teams like this. 
First and goal for De La Salle at the Pittsburgh eight yard line. Buckley split far left. Austin Lone Star split far right. It's Williams running in to get the ball into the arms of his running back. I have a tally on that one. And Vitale picks up two yards. Yeah, Male with the stop this time. Late Good decision job. there. Miss. Late decision there by Williams. Didn't know if he wanted yeah. to keep it or hand it off. Try to wait as long as he could before making that decision. Give to Vitale once again. Left side who tries to plunge into the end zone. Loose ball. He was just short. Looks like he got back on it though. Contact was made. A hard hit on Vitali. I don't know if that jarred the ball loose or not, but Vitali sure tried to plunge his way, leap over a defender for Pittsburgh there to get into the end zone. He will not. Mm. And Big so that'll create a again. third and four and a timeout taken on the field. Yep, D'Angelo Powell on the ground again. Tried to come back in. Must still not be quite right. So with Powell down on the ground, 5 minutes 56 left to go in the third quarter. We'll turn it over to an advertisement from Tim Fitzgerald here with De La Salle leading 14-7 on PlayOnSports.com. Do you want to watch more of your school's great matchups like the game you are enjoying here tonight? Tell your school to sign up for the Play on Sports school broadcast program. The program allows schools to broadcast all their games and other activities on the web. For more information, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. All right. Thank you, Tim. They are having to tend to the big man right now this time. Not able to hop off. This one seems a little more serious. Like I said, for Pittsburgh, he is one of their all-leaguers yep, this year. Powell. Talk about that offensive line in which four of the five starters were, off, or were all league. Of course, Antonio Huey, co-MVP, first-team offensive lineman and defensive lineman, both unanimous selections. Renee Cardona, a first team offensive lineman, all league. And then Larry Cerna Cruz joins Powell as a second team all league lineman. Other all leaguers on this Pittsburgh squad Xavier Crawford, second team defensive back. Corey Alexander, a first team defensive back. Marcel Underwood, a second team linebacker. Harris Ross was a first team running back. Unanimous selection. Crajan Menifee was a second team utility man. And Jamal Lockett, first team running back. Mm. Once again, unanimous selection. We have not seen him too much tonight. No, just one return. And he had to limp off the field after that one. So here we are, Michael. Un just under six minutes left. De La Salle looking for their first two score advantage of the night. Third and goal from the four. Both teams kind of jumping off is. early. No whistle is made, flag or thrown, and it's Pepe Vitale, left side, getting into the end zone for a touchdown for De La Salle. Yeah, Pittsburgh looked a little disgusted after that play that that thing wasn't blown dead. But you got to keep playing. Big lane, though, for Vitale. So Pepe Vitale with a hat trick tonight, three touchdowns. We're only in the third quarter. Extra point is up and good from Duncan. And so De La Salle's lead up to 14, their largest lead of the night. 21-7 is your score. Play on Sports is on Facebook and Twitter, giving you news and information and links to great highlights. Follow us at Play on Sports on both Facebook and Twitter. You can also access thousands, thousands of live and on-demand games on YouTube at youtube.com slash playonnetwork. All right. Thank you, Tim. Taylor Sal playing both of my two favorite college teams' fight songs. They started by <laughs> yeah. playing Notre Dame's fight song after their touchdown, and then after the extra point, they play in the fight for California. They are. The California Golden Bears theme song, Cal will take on Oregon State in their final regular season game of the season out in Corvallis, Oregon tomorrow. And you talk about Oregon State, they're black and orange like Pittsburgh. I was say, looking at them right here, yeah. And yet it is De La Salle players that are keying Oregon State success this season. Yep. Two of the most talented running backs to ever 
play here at De La Salle. Tyler Anderson and Teron Ward having successful years, especially Teron Ward yeah. really has seen a lot of time on the field as a running back for Oregon State this season as a high, shallow kick by De La Salle yep, is taken for row. Pittsburgh just near their own 20-yard line. Not much room to return the ball as Pitt gets it out to just shy of their own 30-yard line, but to continue... Yeah, quickly back to Cal. Thank God that's almost over with. Yeah, that right? Is... Well, I, well, I've been a season ticket holder. Nothing was yeah, worse that was than the loss I saw last week against Oregon. <laughs> Indeed. Oregon, which had... Two Pittsburgh players as stars of their secondary, Eric Dargan and Avery Patterson, former players from Pitt. Eric Dargan on the year with only one interception for 14 yards, whereas Avery Patterson tied for first on the team with three interceptions, has the most return yards on those interceptions with 111 yards, and he's returned two of those interceptions for touchdowns. Pittsburgh with a huge run here by Harris Ross, streaking down the sideline. And Tatala Tassi will push him out finally at the De La Salle 20, but there is a flag on the field. Sadly, this will come back for Pittsburgh. Got a hold. No, and a little Actually, formation. a false start call against mm. Pittsburgh, who has jumped the gun quite a bit in their last couple of series. We've yeah. seen it. This is an illegal formation. Not enough men on the line of scrimmage, it would appear. And so Pittsburgh, right when things yeah, seem to go their way and when they most needed it, and yet it gets called back. A big game that never happened, unfortunately, for them. We do have Krajan Menefee back on the field. That's a good sign for them. Krajan Menefee back out on the field is a good sign. He is the only... Pirate responsible for a touchdown or, or any score of any kind tonight. Menifee with the black towel hanging out from underneath his jersey just above his pants. Tonight, Pittsburgh in the white on orange. I was kind of wondering what they were going to come with. White on white, white on black, wow. white on orange, maybe white on gray pants. Tonight, they are coming in the white on orange. A good look with the black helmets. So that penalty backs them up five yards. It's going to be first and 15 for the Pirates at their own 24-yard line. I formation behind Renteria. And once again, whistles blow from the men in stripes. <laughs> we just got a loose football on the field this time, though, luckily. Be careful with those over there, guys. Dondonville is in at safety right now as De La Salle looks to be coming out in a nickel formation. Pittsburgh passing uh, uh, uh. here on first down, and the pass is going to be out of the reach of Johnson. That had pass a, had him open, had a nice bootleg set up there. They doubled on the flanker and, and on, on Menifee, leaving Johnson open, but the pass was too far behind him. Couldn't even get a finger on that one. Ron Johnson wide open, but a bad pass from Renteria. Makes for second and long. Dondonville still in there at safety is De La Salle still in that nickel look with an extra defensive back. Renteria, a 58 percenter. I'm surprised he's missed some, as much as he has tonight. Another great tackle by Hutchings. Wow, he flies to the ball. Yeah, he does. Got a nose for it too. He came up in a hurry to wrap up the ball carrier there, which was Harris Ross. After a very short pickup, four yards will still make third and 11 for Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh with four minutes and 50 seconds left in the third and still a fourth quarter in which to try to mount a rally of some sorts. Renteria is going to have to get better at the passing game if they're going to need to come back, if they're going to want to come back. Quick screen set up for Crawford. Great play, but what an individual effort by number 32, Kevin Griffin. Goodness gracious, that was all him. If he doesn't make that tackle, Crawford could have been off the races. He could have been gone, indeed. Yeah, Griffin with a very good open field tackle, wrapped him up at the legs. That's what you want to do with the speedster like that. Yep, responsible for the block kick tonight as well. Fourth and one for Pittsburgh, and despite 
the fact that they have punted the ball pretty well tonight, they're going to go for it. They feel like they need to at this point in time. Four minutes left in the third. We'll see if they and just only try a yard to, draw. to pick up. They'd run a play. They do run a play. It's Nowhere Ross up the middle, and I believe De La Salle has snuffed it out. Boy, that's for a turnover on down. Yeah, that is dangerous inside your own territory. It's one thing when they were threatening to score in the first quarter, or if they were at midfield or just across it. But boy, trying that right there on a fairly conservative play, no misdirection, just trying to go straight ahead. And it's going to give De La Salle the ball. Pitt thought that they Down were going to get the benefit yeah. of the doubt from the refs, but De La Salle just stacking that front with a bunch of bodies, leaving no room to run for Pittsburgh. And a rarity in high school football these days, they're actually going to bring out the chains to measure it, something I've been an advocate of that they should do more often. Yeah, the coaches need to ask for that more too, I think. Oh, he is a half of a football short. And that wasn't even close to looking at the yeah, spot that's where about a whole ball, yeah. the refs brought it back to. And so another drive stalls out for Pittsburgh. And this time, not in the best of field territory. No. It stalls out into their own territory at the own at their uh, at their own 39-yard line. Just too risky there. Or, you know, at least try a bootleg, some sort of misdirection, but going for it right there inside your own territory. This is where I think De La Salle is going to look to the skies here. Indeed. A pass right so off the butt, but the they pitch. don't. Nope. Actually, okay. it's Williams keeping himself. Touchdown. And He's he has gone. room. He will oh, be. Oh, they're going to flag him. No. Tackled. He is a touchdown. Dragged down by the back of his jersey, but he does make it into the end zone. Two great fakes by Williams there. Fake to the fullback. Fake a pitch to the tailback. Takes it himself. Broke contain right up the gut. Touchdown, De La Salle. And here we are, third quarter, starting to pull away. Chris Williams with quickness and agility. Keeps it himself, gets through the middle, finds room along the left side, and then is dragged down by a Pittsburgh defender, but in the end zone for a score. The kick from Duncan is good, and so the extra point makes the score now 28-7. De La Salle, and you can feel them about to turn this game into a blowout. Yep, and that's why you don't go for it there. You've hung with this top-rated team for so long in this game. You've forced a turnover, or at least turnovers on downs before. You could have pinned them in their own territory. You can't give a team this good that easy of an opportunity, that short of a field. Pittsburgh just not converting when they needed to the most. And for De La Salle, it was one and done. Yes. Not to the skies like I had thought, but... The big play happened, though. The big right. play did happen. Just too, too dangerous. Too dangerous is De La Salle with all their weapons. The explosive run game. And now Pittsburgh already was facing having to mount a big comeback. It's going to be even more daunting of a task at this point. Deep kickoff this time. Deep kick for Duncan as he's been varying his kicks throughout the night. Pittsburgh returns it to the 20. We've seen a deep kickoff now from Duncan. We've seen shallow, yep. high kicks. We've seen bouncing squib kicks. Saw squibber, yes. He can do it all. The man with the white and sherbert lime green soccer <laughs> cleats. Yeah, it's kicker style. They always oh, got yeah, something are, like that. Those are the ones uh, I saw a lot of players in the FIFA World Cup wearing. Exactly. At least the barefoot kicker trend is gone. That's an 80s trend I, I don't miss. Never quite understood that one. Yeah, I was never a fan of the <laughs> barefoot kicker myself. I always like to have the most fashionable cleats on the field. That's probably <laughs> yeah, why. Yeah, that's how you do it. Get some some nice Pumas. Oh, Pumas, you got to be kidding me, man. It's all about Nike, man. De La Salle, <laughs> they've got Nike. That's why they're the best. First and 10 now for the Spartans, or for the Pirates at their own 20. And once again, a run that goes nowhere for Pittsburgh. This time it is Menifee. 
The big lanes that were there in the first half have disappeared for Pittsburgh. De La Salle really cranking up their defensive effort. De La Salle team that gets stronger as the game goes on. They sure have. They're always the most conditioned team. Just when you think they're going to tire out, they don't. They're a team that after the game can play a whole other game compared to most teams that are pooped and exhausted. Hmm. Second and ten for the Pirates. And once again, and another flag. run and another swarming effort by the Spartans defense. And another flag. We'll see what this flag is for. Pittsburgh just not built for coming back from this deficit against De La Salle. Lone Star with a rather 70s looking hairdo, long hair. He has his helmet off. Austin Lone Star, a receiver who... Two penalties against Pittsburgh. One was an illegal formation. Mm. And the other is a chop block. The illegal formation call was declined. The chop block accepted by the Spartans. And so that's that should be bigger. a 15-yard yeah. penalty against the, uh, against the Pirates. And so that will take them from their own 20 all the way to down inside their own 10-yard uh, line at their own 5. And so this is a chance now for the Spartans to really get uh, aggressive here and try to go for the safety. Yeah, the script has flipped now. Pittsburgh committing the penalties. And we have a Pittsburgh fan roaming the De La Salle side of the field in her black and orange. And going for it all on a throw is Renteria. Does he complete it? He, he does. Back what a tremendous catch by Xavier Crawford. He was well covered. It was a fade route down the far sideline. And Renteria put it right there. Nice back shoulder fade. He, he threw a, a jump pass on that one. Had to lift his body up as he chucked that thing down the left sideline. Great job of coming back to it by Crawford. Chima Onyekwu was in on the play for Pittsburgh. He comes off limping. limping Once again, again, knee injury. Yeah. This time it's Corey Alexander checking things with the referees, making sure he's lined up correctly here on a first and ten after the nice catch. And it's Harris Ross. Boy, look at Xavier nice Banks run. get side to side. Great job by the big guy to scrape and get down the line. Michael Hutchings in on the tackle. We have Hutchings fans all in front of us here in the booth. His mom just to the front and, uh, front and to the left of us. A six-yard pickup for Harris Ross. Gets the ball out to the pit 42-yard line, second and four. Only one receiver for Pittsburgh. That is Zach Hansen. And another run for Ross. And he is tripped up in the backfield by Xavier Banks. And Banks showing off his quickness. The big guy really igniting this crowd right now. The run stuffer showing lateral movement. Scraping and getting down the line. Penetration again. Great hustle. Six feet, 285 pounds. The fire plug. Is Xavier Banks. So just when Pittsburgh makes the big play, started to show some signs of life, now facing another critical third down. Banks, one of those four-year De La Salle guys. He spent his high school career with the program. Third and four for the Pirates. And it's Menifee running into a gang of green and silver. Blown up by Hutchings. Taking control of this game. They are fired up. You can see the life and the energy in the De La Salle defense right now. Sumner Houston also in the area for De La Salle, number 54. And those, yeah. Fourth and four for Pittsburgh. Those running lanes have disappeared. Now, unfortunately, they kind of do have to go for it. This time at least out to the 43-ish. But perhaps they are thinking of kicking. Menifee has to hop off, hobble off this field again. This time they will punt. So just down a score earlier, go for it. Now down three scores, deciding to punt. Tomas Salas back deep to punt. Who's had a good night. Pittsburgh with a lot of talented playmakers. I would, uh, I would watch out for the fake here. Yeah, indeed. It's and good call. actually they're just coming out into this formation 
as the quarter the ends. Expire. So get a little bit more time to think about if they really want to punt or if they feel that their time is running out and they need to try to get points as early as possible. Folks, we're going into the fourth and final quarter here from Owen Owens Field on the campus of De La Salle High School in Concord, California with the score, the De La Salle Spartans leading by 21, 28 to 7 here on PlayOnSports.com. That's right, PlayOnSports.com is not only your destination for Friday night football action, but it's also the place for the most comprehensive coverage of high school playoff and championship events in all sports from across the country. PlayOnSports.com, high school sports, live here. All right, folks, we're back here. It is De La Salle. It is Pittsburgh. The rivalry renewed. They've been rivals ever since that streak. Pittsburgh has won some NCS titles of their own, but not as much as De La Salle. De La Salle on a 20-win streak of NCS titles in a row consecutive. Pittsburgh won NCS championships in 1980 and 1985. And in 85, De La Salle won a championship as well. That was when De La Salle was a member of the NCS 2A. They, had yet, they hadn't gotten as big as they were. They were yeah. still a rather small school at that point. Pittsburgh was in the large school division, the 3A, the largest at the time, before it went to eventually 4A. And now where we're at here, uh, Division yeah. One. Division One now, yes. When I was playing, it was the 4A East Bay. was the highest competition of division in the North Coast section. We were members of the 4A at Liberty. We went to the playoffs and got bounced by Foothill in the first round. Mm. But like I said, we did play Dale Sal. We were a member of the, we were we were a participant in the streak. <laughs> that you it's were. awesome. That is <laughs> it's a little place in history there. Oh yeah. <laughs> Not for all the right reasons. No. <laughs> history nonetheless. My junior year, I'll never forget it at home. Maurice Jones drew three times touching the ball all to the house. <laughs> Kick return, punt return, and a halfback dive. Another Pittsburgh punts the ball away and Nothing. running up to make the fair catch for the De La Salle Spartans is Andrew Buckley, and he'll grab it at about the 30-yard line. High hanger again, but not enough distance. Able to set up at their own 30. Think Talking about those... Stars for De La Salle and Pittsburgh that are playing for the two Oregon schools. They will get to duke it out next week in the Civil War between Oregon and Oregon State. Both teams could come into that one highly ranked. De La Salle running the ball here. Ooh. It's Tatala Tassi who was injured at one point in this game is now back out onto the field. Actually, I'm sorry, it's Pepe Vitale on the carry. Big hit by number 55 of Pittsburgh. That's Antonio, Antonio Huey. Huey again. Yeah, laying some wood. Big 6'2", 180-pounder. I see why he is so highly touted. Yeah, I couldn't quite find anyone throwing any offers his way, but Huey is highly touted. Big guy. Right. This time it's a toss play. Right side to Talatasi, breaking free of some tackles, still on his feet. And will finally get knocked out of bounds. At the Pittsburgh 43-yard line, Tatala Tassi. In what injury, I should say? Yeah, he, exactly. He looks perfectly fine. Looks Same crisp. story for Pittsburgh. They have a chance to make a play near the line of scrimmage. Lopez, number 48 this time, can't bring him down. Then down the field, trying to lay shoulder blows instead of wrapping up. It's been the poor tackling of Pittsburgh that has done them in so far. Mote Miley. Very displeased with the defensive effort on that play. He was pretty upset towards the end. It'll be first and 10 for De La Salle. Like I said, at the Pittsburgh 44. It's Vitale rushing up the gut. And Vitale gets out to the 36-yard line of Pittsburgh. That'll be an 8-yard carry. Pittsburgh defenders looking gassed right now. Slowly working their way back to their huddle to the defensive line. A little deflated, a little worn down. Williams slow to get under center. 
Try to take off as much clock as possible. And it's Vitali trying to gain up some momentum and steam, but he is brought down in a hurry by Miley in the backfield. A loss of yards there. More penetration by big number 43 this time, able to bring him down. That's a two in a row for him now after missing some chances at stops like that in the first half. It'll be third and four. Some scores to get you caught up on in the Play on Sports Network. Annalee and Campolindo in the third quarter. Annalee barely hanging on to the lead, 24-21 in that one. Their undefeated season on the hinges. Oh, and Egu. Yeah, Egu Williams wasn't ready. firing for Victor Egu. Egu's got to be ready for that. That hit him in the hands. He just wasn't looking. He's He had a step on the safety. He's got to be ready for that. Williams is letting him know it. He did reach out a hand, but that was a dart from Williams. Egu, who will be playing collegiately, not for offense, though. So no. This isn't his best position tight end, <laughs> no. but he is one heck of a defensive player. Linebacker, defensive end, whatever you call it. He will be future Cal Bear, a correct? future Cal Bear, blue and gold. Can't wait for that. Season ticket holder, I am all excited. Going for this fourth down with 10 minutes left in the game. No, nope. they're going to pooch kick it with Williams. Oh. Pittsburgh taking it at their 10, backpedaling, and now getting upfield is Crawford, and Crawford takes a licking from Williams. What a pop by the quarterback. Chris Williams coming up and hitting him pretty hard with his helmet in the shoulders. Yeah, good form by the quarterback, in fact. Meanwhile, fi uh, Foothill has finally got on the board against Cal in the third quarter to score in that one. Cal 33, Foothill 6. Whoo. So the number two seed looking like they should advance. And Justin Siena is up 27-7 to on St. Mary's. Justin Siena of Napa putting together a pretty good season. Looks like there's going to be a flag on this return, pushing Foothill back, or rather pushing Pittsburgh back even further. De La Salle, number one in almost every ranking you can find here in Northern California, whether it's the San Francisco Gate Chronicle poll, the NorCal Top 25 poll, of course, number one here in the playoff bracket. Pittsburgh resuming play after the pooch punt and they feed the ball up the middle Harris Ross yeah. just trying to get out of their own the shadow of their own end zone here at this point De La Salle also the number one team in the state at the moment trailing them is Narbonne High School Pittsburgh who is up to number 8 in the Chronicle Top 25 poll Number 15 in the NorCal Cal High Sports rankings. Having a tough time with De La Salle tonight. It'll be second and seven from their own 12-yard line. Another run for Pittsburgh. This time picking up pretty nice pickup, a pretty nice gain of yards. Not quite first down yardage, but it'll be about three yards shy of the sticks. Make that about, just about a yard, huh? Just about yeah. a yard, yeah. They, they came pretty close there. Yeah. Ross tried to lower the shoulder, get that first down just short. Critical third down here for Pittsburgh. If they want to have any chance of making this a game again, try the quick sneak. I think he's got it. Yep, first down. So Pitt does manage to pick up the first down on the third down there. Third and one converted for the Pirates. Just over eight minutes left to play in this ball game, and Pittsburgh is down by 21. They're going to need to get a quick strike of some sort of fashion, whether it be a run that goes the distance or a big pass play. Harris Ross slips on the turf there. Great penetration by Austin Hooper. He like busted a, that play up. Austin Hooper, 6'4", 247 pounds. Definitely has the size for the next level. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people saying he has 
the ability to play at the next level. It just depends on him where he wants to go. Like I said, offers galore. Yeah. For the defensive end. And this time Pittsburgh does look to the air and oh, lofts oh. one up. Tried to hit for a... Corey Alexander yeah. Buckley. Nearly had it fall into his bucket for the interception. He sure did. Two defenders there for De La Salle. Kind of ran into each other, in fact, breaking up this pick. But tried to get the corner route to Alexander. He stopped. He didn't run this route all the way through. He should have kept going based on where the throw ended up. Good coverage, though. Two defenders in the area. Dangerous toss. Yeah, you had the original cornerback on the play, Alan Marion. And then, of course, Buckley is a safety coming out to help his cornerback in coverage. Second down, make that third and 11 for Pittsburgh. A delayed handoff there. And the ball carrier will get just past the original line of scrimmage, creating what will be a fourth and about eight for the Pirates. We've got a major injury on the field this time. Trainers came sprinting out. Coach is checking in. Player is writhing in pain, kicking on the field. Not sure who it is yet, but... He is hurt bad. Well, how about this? Uh, we'll go to an advertisement really quick with the injury on the field, folks. 28-7 to 7 is your score, and hopefully the man for Pittsburgh will be all right. We will remind you of the postgame show coming up. Stay tuned. Playonsports.com postgame show. We will select our player of the game as well as wrap up all the action from tonight's contest. That's coming up following the game on your destination for high school sports. Playonsports.com. All right. Thank you, Tim. Man still down for Pittsburgh. I have an early thought on who my player of the game would be at the moment. Mm-hmm. Same here. I think I have an early thought on who this injured player is. A very no. quiet, calm Owen Owens field right now. Yeah, each side. Certainly the Pittsburgh side taking a knee, the De La Salle side showing some concern as well. So things just getting worse for Pittsburgh mm -hmm, at the moment. Mm -hmm. Ever since the start of the second quarter, they haven't quite been themselves as far as what they showed in the past four games coming into this one and also the first quarter. Yeah, in which and how they started this. They were this able to stay with De La Salle. For about a quarter and a half, they looked really impressive, looked like they were going to make this a fight. And they, they have. They certainly have close game at the half, but... They haven't backed away. That's, yeah. Uh, that's one thing that they haven't done. They've still stuck to their format of running the ball. Mm -hmm. We've seen passes here and there, only one completed yeah. by the quarterback, Renteria. That, that's what has held them back tonight. But he hasn't thrown an interception. And in every game in which he hasn't thrown an interception, they've won. They have. They've only lost the games where he's thrown picks. And in those losses, he threw two each. Six interceptions on the year for Lorenzo mm. Renteria. And three games with two interceptions apiece. Those being the loss to Freedom, 49-48. to The loss to Monta Vista, 44-14. And the loss to Cal, 40-34. to so the injured player is up. As you hear the crowd applause, he's having to be helped off. They had to bring out, in fact, one of their backup offensive linemen, number 78, Milton Hollins, to help out the injured player. Still can't get a, a look on who, who the injured player is, his jersey number, as he's being helped off. Appears to be maybe one of the offensive linemen. Maybe D'Angelo Powell. Perhaps, but I th yeah, that's who my initial thought earlier, was. But I see, coming up hobbling I thought earlier. I saw him standing. We'll figure it out. Meanwhile, fourth down for Pittsburgh, and they will punt the ball away. Playing a respectable game with De La Salle. And they will down the punt at their own 45-yard line. Nowhere or no one in the area for De La Salle to return it. Yeah, just letting that one go. 
Head coach Latticer with the gray hooded jacket. Yeah, we've got D'Angelo Powell back on the field, so that is not the injured pirate. Still trying to see who that is. Chris Williams gets up underneath center. Receiver split to each side. Also two backs in the backfield. He'll keep it himself on the veer option to the right. And he slips forward for about a gain of four. Does the quarterback Williams. Igu will check in for the De La Salle Spartans as well. As Morris, a receiver. Now De La Salle can really salt this thing away. Just a little over six minutes left in control. Second and six after the four-yard quarterback keep. It's Vitali left Boom. side. He's finding gone. some wide open room. He could go all the way, but he oh, will oh, oh. be tackled by Pittsburgh. Xavier Crawford, a touchdown saving stop on the far sideline. Just inside the 10-yard line. It looked like Vitali was going to show his verve and mm -hmm. get into the end zone along the left side, far side. Crawford up to the challenge, though, showing his wheels. Vitali, who's just ran the ball so well tonight, has to have over 100 yards at this point. Already has three touchdowns. Vitali running and left side, fourth. and he will slip past the defender and get into the end zone. A fourth Score on the night for Tia Pepe Vitali. And it's now 34 to 7. De La Salle. Well, here we are. The score differential we were expecting. And it did take a while for it to happen. They put up the fight. Pittsburgh did. The extra point is good. And now the score, 35-7 to seven with 5 minutes and 42 seconds left to play. Pittsburgh traveling on the road, not too far from their campus. About a 15-minute drive. Was hoping to pull off the shocker upset yeah. every time they play De La Salle. It's always mentioned, is, is, is Pittsburgh going to do it again? They were the last <laughs> ones to do it. And every year it just seems as if Pitt just comes up short. And that's the impressive thing is, you know, De La Salle's success just continuing year in and year out. Yeah. Just when you think seniors would graduate, they're going to yeah. drop off again. Another stellar class comes in. People just step up and produce. It's all about the system. It's in place. It's still going. Keep churning out the same type of attitude, the same and that's preparation. The thing, you know, it's, it's, it's so much more than just having good athletes. His Latticer, mm -hmm. his main focus, he's stated many, many times, yeah, it's great to have all these wins, but deep down, what I want is I want these men to be better men. Yeah. You know, that's his big thing, his big coaching uh, imprint that he has left for that's his legacy. That's always the staple of a great coach to me, too. Yeah, he just wants to turn, you know, the other coaches, they – they make sure to, to do the coaching as far as, you know, playing the game. And Latticer does too, but his main priority is making sure that these guys handle themselves with dignity and class and are good people. He sees the big picture, and that helps them as a whole in the long run. If, if these kids come in with a big picture in mind of, of what they're supposed to be like and, and – living up to a standard that's been set. I think that sort of pressure, that expectation of living up to a standard and ideal goes a long way for motivating the kids. Pittsburgh with very little motivation in this one. Five minutes and 34 seconds left, down 28. A comeback seems very insurmountable at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you talk about De La Salle, week, how their week normally goes for a Friday night game. Well, Mondays... They have film review during lunch. Then after school, it's off to practice to work on the offensive side of the ball. And that's when the players are given a copy of the scouting report for the week's game. Mm -hmm. And then practice ends with conditioning and gassers, which are always fun. <laughs> those are just... Maybe to you. Boy, I, don't I don't know, know. man. <laughs> I huffed and puffed throughout yeah. those things. Got a lot of replacements out there for the De La Salle D. And it's showing as here's Menifee running free. <laughs> Menifee trying to torch... The backup players for the De La Salle <laughs> defense. 
Good to see him still playing hard and fighting through his injury tonight. Trying to Showed pat, a lot of heart. Trying to pat his stats at the moment. <laughs> Something to brag about when he gets back to Pittsburgh. And he has to slowly Something. limp off again. As does as does Nwekwu again. This is a banged up Pittsburgh team. And that's really what it's all about this time of year is being healthy. Mm -hmm. Battle uh, of attrition. First and ten for the Pirates after the big busting breakthrough run by Menifee. And a timeout will be taken by Pittsburgh with four minutes and 27 seconds left in this one. Let's continue on through a week with the Spartans, though. So then on Tuesdays, that's when the Spartans shift to the defensive side of the ball. And there's Coach Padella. Or, I'm sorry, uh, Coach Vargas for Pittsburgh. Getting my coaches mixed up here. I was talking to both Coach Vargas of Pittsburgh, Coach Pinella of De La Salle. Coach Vargas was huge in giving us all the information for Pitt as far as their starters. And uh, let's get Coach Vargas on here before he retreats to the field. Coach, uh, you guys have shown some flashes of brilliance running, but just some injuries have really taken a toll on you tonight, huh? Yeah, we were we were in the game for you know to you know midway through the third quarter. We felt we got jobbed on a fumble over here. The replay shows it, but you know, and then you know, De La Salle as good as they are, they they took control. And do we have an idea of who that injured player was on the field? As Renteria completes a pass far sideline for uh, I believe that's Corey Alexander, who streaks down the sidelines and picks up some additional yards after the first down. Yeah, our injured guy, that's Mota Mile, he's our tight end, oh, DN. That is a huge he's injury. a you know, both you know, first team all BAL guy on both sides of the ball, so that's a huge loss for us there. But And do we know what he injured? Um sound like his shoulder popped. Okay. So. so yeah. But hey, we're closing the gap next year. We'll be back. All right. Words from Coach Vargas as he joins us for a quick minute on Good the broadcast. Good showing, Coach. Thanks for your time. Coach Vargas of the Pittsburgh Pirates who will not give in. They will not give up at this point. Four minutes and 11 seconds left, and they're still trading this ball game as if it's a one-score game mm -hmm. and another injury, and maybe they shouldn't be doing that to, for any of these guys that might be playing sports after football. You yeah. want to try to keep them healthy in a game where at this point it doesn't seem like a, and a this comeback's going to happen. This appears to be the already banged up Jamal Lockett. It sure is. Jamal Lockett, who has seen some action. He must have pleaded his case to try to get in this game and what looks like will be their final contest of the season. But One thing no I will avail. say, Pittsburgh has looked pretty good on the field, though, with them orange pants, the black numbers with the orange shadow box on the white jerseys. I think they've looked good in their effort tonight, and Coach Vargas might be right. They may be closing the gap a bit. This was like we expected. This was a contest through two, two and a half quarters, basically. Oh, blowing up again, though. Run up the middle. Well, one thing I will say, you look at this Pittsburgh team, and there are a lot of juniors yeah. that started for tonight's game. Xavier Crawford's going to be a big-time player next year. You also talk about Harris Ross, unanimous selection, all-leaguer. He's ran the ball well tonight. And then, of course, that offensive line, three yeah. juniors, Cardona, Cerna Cruz, and D'Angelo Powell all returning. That is a nice luxury to have. It sure is. To have continuity on an offensive line is a really big deal, too. That's a spot that that's extremely necessary to have. Pump fake by Renteria, and he'll take off himself and pick up the first down, converting the third and six, getting the ball out further into De La Salle territory, coming that much closer to scoring. So for Pittsburgh, their season will end after tonight. Considering how it started, I think them getting to where they got, it's got to feel like at least a, a pretty decent accomplishment. Well, they always Some of the losses they had early in the year. Well, they always schedule themselves a very tough non-conference. That they is do. one thing that Coach uh, Vic Galley likes to do to have his team prepared for the playoffs. Vic Galley saying this, he said, quote, it's grind a little bit. Quite honestly, I schedule hard because you have to be battle-tested when you get into the playoffs. Absolutely. You have to have played some good teams. And 
I mean, they could. The, the, arguably one of the toughest schedules in the Bay Area is it's Renteria keeping it himself. No, he'll throw at the last minute and complete the pass to Zach Hansen, who spins off a couple tackles and gets into the end zone with an easy jaunt towards the corner of the far end zone. Ren Zach Hansen and Lorenzo Renteria hook up to give Pittsburgh their second score of the evening. Renteria has to hobble off after this play, too. Boy, it just keeps piling up for Pittsburgh, even though when they finally get back on the scoreboard, albeit against De La Salle's backups. A nice throw, though, and, and great effort by Alexander, or Xavier Crawford, rather. And, uh, boy, it, we should have had some of those earlier if you were Pittsburgh, but he, went, he got all the way up to the line of scrimmage on that one, too, before letting it go. Yeah, I thought it was Hanson who made the catch. Was it Hanson? Okay. Number 18. But, yeah, talk about Pittsburgh's schedule as they will take another timeout with 2 minutes and 21 seconds left. I mean, look at the teams they've played. They opened off the season with Clayton Valley, who's number 25 in the, Nor er, in the Max Preps NorCal Top 25 and a top seed in the NCS Division II bracket. They're playing Dublin this weekend. Then their second game, they take on they took on California of San Ramon, who's the number two seed in Division One, number nineteen in Max Preps NorCal Top Twenty Five, playing Foothill. Then they had to play Monta Vista, who was uh, a, a number a nine or a number eight seed in yeah. the NCS Division One yeah. playoffs. Berkeley coming into the playoffs. Berkeley was, I believe, a thirteen seed in the Division One bracket. Then Granite Bay, who is still alive in the Sac Joaquin section. Number 11 in the Max Preps NorCal Top 25. They're playing Downey this weekend in the second round of the Sac Joaquin Section Division 1. Yeah, my old high school was a slouch, Liberty. I'll, <laughs> I'll admit that. But then you, they played Freedom. Yeah. And Freedom is number 17 in the Max Preps NorCal Top 25. They'll play Logan in the second round, I believe, tomorrow night. And that's how you do it. You schedule tough early on, and De La Salle does it. You know, they go out mm. of state to find the tough competition to mix it up. I know that was a, a staple of my high school back in Missouri. Pittsburgh looking for two with a different quarterback. Uh -oh. The throw looked to be on the money, and a diving effort was made by Pittsburgh, but they cannot come up with the catch. Yeah, let him a little too far there. Silverio Osuna, the quarterback. So Osuna getting some time. The two-point try no good. But yeah, then Deer Valley, who was in the playoffs yeah. against Foothill for a first-round game that I broadcasted last week on Play On. And they have some talented playmakers, especially the twin brothers usual. of Zuzi Webster and Simba Webster. They shall be good again next year, shall the Deer Valley Wolverines. Heritage could have made it to the playoffs. They had, yes, 3-7 and seven overall, but they had a league record that would have qualified them. But Heritage mm. did the right thing in saying, you know what, we know we're not that strong. We're not even going to bother applying. And then, of course, Antioch making it to the yeah. playoffs. I mean, a very tough schedule for Pittsburgh. And then have to play Monta Vista again. Yeah. De La Salle. My hats go off to him for the job they've done this year, having to play with injuries, especially Jamal Lockett. We got De La Salle setting up expecting an onside kick. We'll see if Pittsburgh does that. But... Down 35-13 here, though, with just 2.21 left. David Moffitt and Hutchings are up front to try to return the onside kick. And De La Salle's going to burn a timeout. Moffitt calling for a timeout. Explain some of the offers that he can get. Talking about Moffitt, where he can go. Arizona, Colorado, Colorado State, Houston, Utah, UNLV, and Washington State interest, or have given him offers. Him and Austin Hooper are the ones that have yet to decide. Like I said, Austin Hooper, where where can't he choose <laughs> yeah. from? Every Almost every school nice in the Pac-12. I mean, let's break them down. Arizona, Arizona State, Army, Boise State, Cal, Colorado, Houston, Nevada, Northwestern, Notre Dame, Oregon, Oregon State, San Jose State, Stanford, Utah, and Washington State. Washington has been his only visit. That was last okay. weekend during the bye. Most tend to think that's where he's going to end up with Tosh a Lupoy, a former De La Salle graduate. Yeah, that's who a program is, on the rise, too. Oh, Their yeah. Defense is special these days. They'll be getting Darrell Daniels from yeah. Freedom. They are going to be loaded next year, Will the Huskies. 
It's Alan Marion returning a kick. Yeah, it I takes did. an extra hit at the end, and yes, the flag will fly, as that was definitely a late hit there by Pittsburgh's number four. For Pittsburgh. Well, maybe now the chippiness of the bitter rivalry and, and scoreboard starting to show up. Yeah, they're calling that one on Shane Morris. Shane Morris coming in with the extracurricular hit mm -hmm. at the end. Hitting Marion hard in his helmet, it seemed like, while he was down on the ground. Especially with concussions. That's the last yeah. thing you want to see. Concussions taking a couple quarterbacks out of the game for the NFL this week. Big game Monday night between the Niners and the Bears. Yeah, and will, both will of both them. quarterbacks be yeah. here? We got Jason Campbell going for the Bears. It, it appears Alex Smith is going to play this weekend. Williams is under center for De La Salle. They're not going to mop up minutes with their backups on the offensive end. Well, at least not at quarterback. That is number 37. David Riopel. Yep, running the ball there. Riopel, who was a key cog to last year's De La Salle team with Joe Teo injured for a majority mm. of the season. Daz is only a sophomore and Vitali is a junior. Yeah, so they will bring these two back next year. Speaking of loaded programs, they'll just keep churning them out. McCaffrey onto the field as a receiver for De La Salle. Griffin McCaffrey, as well as Alec Bruce. Williams under center. Toss play right side near us here in the booth. Goes to Kyle Mouton, 5'9", 163-pound senior. Getting a chance to carry the ball. Approaching a minute left in this one. And De La Salle has definitely earned his victory tonight. Mm -hmm. Some outstanding running. And just a defense that stays true to the word dominant. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the thing about De La Salle is their they're, they're offensive and defensive lines, I mean, they're not the biggest guys out there, but they right. just get the job done. Very fundamentally sound, although we saw big Xavier Banks making some moves and making plays. Rio Pell with a patient run there, waiting yeah. for blocking to develop in front of him along the left side. In fact, De La Salle's defense, i got to say, Michael, has made my player of the game choice a little cloudier than it was when we were, say, early in the third quarter. Okay. I'm but curious, uh, I think I'm, I still I still have I'm a lead candidate to know that's probably why. the same as yours. Yes. But, boy, some of the plays Hutchings made and Banks, that was uh, to, to keep Pittsburgh from being able to answer. That was a big deal. Yeah. No, Banks made some key plays, and, of course, Hutchings will be Hutchings. Mm -hmm. He brings it every night, has led the team in tackles every night, and it's Hutchings this time getting to run with the ball offensively. But, yeah, Hutchings... I mean, he is, he's there, Patrick Willis. He, he sure will lead is. the team in tackles every night, and he will advance along with his teammates, the De La Salle Spartans. Pick up the win in the second round after receiving a first round bye. Still perfect now as they climb to 11 0 after beating their longtime rival and foe, the Pittsburgh Pirates, the number eight seed, or number nine seed in this. North Coast Section Division One bracket for the year 2012. De La Salle wins 35 to 13 here at home in front of their fans, and they'll be awaiting the winner of the Amador Valley contest tomorrow night. Amador Valley, San Ramon Valley, a big EBAL matchup. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, you know that's that's going to be a great game right it, there. It you want to talk two offenses going at it? I guarantee you that. No matter what happens, the losing team will not just have seven points in that one. <laughs> or 13 points. They did manage to get that last touchdown here, exactly. Yeah, they had to correct myself there. That's all right. But the game was decided certainly by that point. The game was definitely decided by that point. So, folks, here's what's going to happen. We will get into a post-game show in just a couple seconds. I'm going to have Tim try to uh, go lasso up our, our player of the game, yeah. bring him up here for an interview. But, uh, folks, just stick around. We'll be right back here on PlayOnSports.com, your destination for high school sports. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, perfect. 
prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? Start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP.
We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. Prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. Welcome back to Concord, California here on the PlayOnSports.com postgame show. I'm Michael Smith. My color commentator, Tim Fitzgerald, I believe, is still trying to track down our player of the game, who we came to an agreement was Tia Pepe Vitali with four touchdowns tonight, paced De La Salle in the scoring side of things. They went on to win 35-7. to He had four of the five touchdowns tonight. One of the touchdowns came courtesy of their quarterback, that being the junior Chris Williams. A dominating defensive performance from De La Salle Spartans, which is traditional. You always see it. Their defense comes to play. They were led by Michael Hutchings on the defensive side of things. And Pittsburgh stuck around with De La Salle in the first quarter, and then for the, sec for the second, third, and fourth, it was no contest on who was going to win this game as De La Salle stormed out in front and never looked back. And... Um, you know, you could you could credit that to um, maybe some hard-nosed defense of Dale South. Of course, there were some injuries for Pittsburgh that were pretty key. Crajan Menifee, who ran the ball well, um, had a, that big 25-yard gallop for a touchdown to tie the things up in the first quarter. He went down. He would never be the same throughout the game, kind of coming in and out, hobbling in and out. They also lost their talented tight end and defensive lineman Mote Male, uh, who got hurt in the – fourth quarter and so Pittsburgh and of course trying to deal with Jamal Lockett who had been hurt throughout the whole season uh, wasn't really 100% but coach Vic Galley still wanted to play him tonight and uh, it just just didn't work out for the Pittsburgh Pirates whereas De La Salle just stuck to their game plan and once again performed well uh, Chris Williams for a junior really made all the right reads at the right time uh, didn't turn the ball over uh, all that much tonight. There was that one, what looked to be a fumble, but Williams was downed by contact, and he did enough to win the ball game, made some good throws. Uh, Austin Hooper had a, a, a nice long reception as well as uh, Buckley and Lone Star in this one for De La Salle. And it just, once again, the running combination of Tia Pepe Vitali and Dasmit Tatalatasi, even Tatalatasi shaking off an injury, coming back in and looking just as good as he did before the injury. And De La Salle, perfection uh, stays put for them. They are now 11-0 and and will host another playoff game here at the friendly confines of Owen Owens Field. It will be against either the Amador Valley Dons or the San Ramon Valley Wolves, who will play tomorrow night to determine who De La Salle will take on. But uh, one thing's for sure, De La Salle's ready. Their week layoff that they had last week for the first round by showing no ill effects. If anything, it got them even better than they already were as they got a chance to take care of some key injuries, let those guys heal up and get healthy. And it showed tonight they were well-conditioned, way more conditioned than Pittsburgh. But it was just fun to be here and to see these two teams battle it out just to be on hand to broadcast this one. I mean, this is what I equate to the Niners and Cowboys of high school football here, not only in the Bay Area, but uh, in California. I mean, these two teams are so synonymous with meeting with each other, especially in the playoffs. It seems like it's always coming down to the championship between De La Salle and Pittsburgh and a uh, very mirror image with each other as far as uh, turning it on in the second half, uh, running the ball well. Just the big difference, defense. De La Salle has it. That's why they win championships. Pittsburgh didn't have it tonight, and it clearly showed. As far as some other finals uh, from our, our folks here at Play on Sports, Annalee stakes around and pulls off the De La Salle. They stay undefeated with a 38-34 to victory, knocking off the Campolindo Cougars, who had made it to the CIF State Bowl game just a year ago last year. They were shaking off some injuries of their own, but they still have some very talented players, such as uh, Brett Stevens. But um, it wasn't meant to be for Campolindo. Their season comes to an end. Where, meanwhile, Annalee, Annalee stays going on. Justin Siena with a huge win at home, 48-14, to over the St. Mary's Panthers and the East Bay Athletic League game uh, between Amador Valley's rival and San Ramon's Valley rival, Cal beating Foothill 36 to, I believe, 14. There we go. 36 to 6 was the final in that one. And we finally have gotten Tia Pepe Vitali into the booth with us. We had to wait just a little bit. Tim Fitzgerald will 
give him the headset. Should I call you Tia Pepe or Pepe? Or? Uh, is you, it's pronounced Tia Pepe, but I go Tia by Pepe? Pepe. Okay, so Pepe. Yeah. Pleasure to meet you here, you folks. It's time now for the PlayOnSports.com postgame show with our player of the game, Pepe Vitali. And, and Pepe, you guys had a week off to prepare for this one against Pittsburgh. Uh, you guys really took advantage of that week off, yeah. got healthy. Buckley came back tonight and looked pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, you guys just all around looked good. There was some talks of, you know, will De La Salle be a little rusty with that week off, whereas Pittsburgh playing all these games in a row, four in a row. Um, what was your mindset heading into practice this week? Uh, this week, uh, just kind of coming off um, last week's bye week, you know, we knew this was going to be a physical game. And, uh, you know, throughout the whole week, our coaches wanted uh, – the running backs, specifically in the linemen, to get off the ball quick. We knew it was going to be a hard-working game, and uh, I think we really did. We showed that tonight. So, and you guys so synonymous with Pittsburgh. I mean, you met them last year, but that rivalry dates way back then, beyond last yeah. year. Obviously, you guys have played each other it seems every year in North Coast section. They were the last ones to supposedly beat De La Salle in Northern California, yeah. which started the streak. And of course, they got blasted throughout the streak. Um, so, I mean, just knowing that. You know, what? what is kind of your attitude, your team's attitude on Pittsburgh whenever you guys get a chance um, to play you know, them? Every time we play them, they, they've always played us strong, especially tonight. That was a very good uh, Pittsburgh team. And uh, on our coach Edson was uh, telling us this was not a regular Pittsburgh team. This is a Pittsburgh team that was going to come out. They were going to run at you. And uh, they are very, very physical tonight. And uh, the coaches, uh, they were right about it. So that was a, that was a big difference that I've seen. Pittsburgh came out um, hidden. And, uh, I mean, that's what they like to do. But this is a very different Pittsburgh team. And this 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 running program that De La Salle has, I mean, it really doesn't create for too for too much of a guy to become an ultra superstar. I mean, you do put up your numbers. You had four touchdowns tonight of yeah. the five, but you know, it's a very mixed and matched balance attack. You know, Daz to Talatasi gets the ball. Last year, it was between you, Teo, and Rio Pell. Yeah. Um, How does that feel coming to a program? Where you know you're not going to be the ultimate, you know, one down, you know, every down back, but that you're going to split time. Does it kind of ease your mind a little bit, knowing that you know you're not going to all, not all the you know games going to be put on you that you know your other teammates will come and kind of have your back? Yeah, well, basically as a running back, um, you know, um, each and every play that you have, that's uh, basically just for you to execute. And uh, just knowing that the other person right next to you, the other back, such as uh, Daz, you know, Hutch when he's in there too, that they're going to do their jobs as well. So we just come with the mindset just to um, execute every play, you know, uh, as much as we can. So. And what has it meant for, you know, you say Hutch to do his job, Daz to do his job. You know, let's talk about Hutch really quick and Hooper and Igu, um, these seniors as well. And, you know, you're a senior as well. Yeah. Uh, but the seniors on the defensive end, you know, they just continue to dominate which I'm sure even makes it more easier for your offense to go out there and continue to pad on to a lead or kind of stay comfortable with the lead you guys have. Yeah, this is a uh, defense played great tonight. The first drive was kind of shaky, but you know our, our defense really picked it up after that, and they played well throughout the whole night. And um, it, it was good having them uh, stop them on, on drives because uh, that was a great offense. And throughout the whole night, the defense gave us a whole lot of, um, a whole lot of cushion between uh, the field and everything. So they gave us a great – field position throughout the whole game. Okay, well, you guys will be awaiting the winner of Amador Valley and San Ramon Valley, two teams that you're very familiar with of, playing them in the East Bay Athletic League schedule. Will you, any of you guys be going down there to check out that game? Um, yeah, I like, uh, most of the guys are going to check okay. out the game. But, uh, you know, we got – And how practice. do you feel those two teams stack up? I mean, uh, Those are two very great teams. Uh, it's probably going to be a hard-fought game tomorrow night between them. So uh, it just comes out to whoever wants it more. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we play other team. Okay, and last but not least, uh, any offers I, or any interest for some places yet? I, I've yet to see anything come about. Not any offers yet, but um, in a couple like San Jose State, Portland State, um, Colorado State have taken uh, a little bit of interest in me. Cool. So, you know, just uh, working on uh, basically just uh, picking my game up each week, especially in the playoffs. That's where uh, we usually start to pick up our game. And, and have you talked to any of the, the running backs in the past? I mean, you know, the list goes on with the names, yeah. guys that have gone on. College and pros, have you talked to any of them for any advice? Well, yeah, Joe Teo, Lucas Dunn, you know, uh, those are very two great backs that uh, have been through this program that recently, uh, you know, just graduated. And uh, basically the advice that they gave me just, you know, you can't really take your senior year for uh, for granted. You got to um, just every day, you just got to keep working hard because you don't know when, when your day is going to be the last. 
Right. So. Right. Yeah. Well, Pepe, thanks for joining us in the booth. We really right, appreciate you. it. And uh, your boys sure earned the win tonight. Yeah. <laughs> they couldn't have done it without you. Four scores tonight in a 35-7 to route of their rival, the Pittsburgh Pirates. And like I said, they'll be awaiting the winner of the Amador Valley and San Ramon Valley matchup tomorrow out in Pleasanton. So, folks, uh, that's, the, that's the player of the game interview. And uh, we'll be right back with Tim to wrap up the, the post game here from Concord. Thank you. Right. Thank you. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard right. graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. All right, folks, Michael Smith here alongside Tim Fitzgerald back for the postgame show on PlayOnSports.com. Final score, De La Salle 35, Pittsburgh 13. Uh, Tim, your final thoughts on tonight's game and, um, and, and what you saw from both teams? Yeah, it was the contest, at least I expected. Uh, it, it's remained close throughout. This was the Pittsburgh team that was going to put up the biggest fight in a long time to De La Salle, and it happened. And the turning points... Well, it happened in the first quarter. It happened. Sure. It happened for a while. The turning points were fumbles that did and didn't happen, special teams miscues, but then eventually the De La Salle defense we expected took over. They took over and kept the ball on their side and eventually player of the game, Pepe Vitale, punched it in and... It, they just – Pittsburgh didn't have, have enough to come back from that, especially the, as the battle of attrition kicked in, losing the players they did. And that, and they, that, are, they are a mash unit at their locker room. Well, right and that's now, the thing. That. I think Dale South's defense was so dominating that it kept sending Pittsburgh's offense back out there, and they were tired. You've seen yeah. the offensive line coming up to the ball, the quarterback coming up. I mean, they were just tired. Mm -hmm. And, and, and the, the running backs – we're taking a beating for sure. They did. Uh, you know, Crajan Menifee going down at one point, Jamal Lockett going down. Of course, the, we found out it was the tight end, Miley, uh okay, yeah, prospect yep. who went down with, with the, the, the injury, injury who was yeah. down for the longest. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so now they have a whole offseason to get ready. Yeah. Unless they're playing other sports, then yeah. some might take a while. But, uh, but you know, just your, your final thoughts on, on this game as we close out here? Uh, you know, final thoughts would be... This is your first time ever watching De La Salle, right? De La Salle. De La Salle is De La Salle. It is everything is I expected. Is it everything you've ever heard of and more? It certainly was. Now, can, I, can, you see, can you see why and it's it is very, the way it is? It is, and it's very familiar to me because I kind of went to the De La Salle of Missouri. And so, you know, seeing this, I was like, oh, this is all so familiar. The style, the, the preparation. What school was that? The coaching. Went to Valley High School okay. in St. Genevieve, Missouri. Um, I won three state titles sure. and four trips. We were that kind of team. They've won 11 now overall. Right. So it's that was familiar to me, and it was everything I expected, and it was, it was very uh, very disciplined football, although the penalties were a bit surprising. Yeah. It's been an, a bugaboo sure. for them this sure. year. So that's – and that's the only flaw. If they clean that up, they'll keep going. And on the other side from Pittsburgh, it was a lot like what Coach Vargas said. They are closing that gap. This was a very talented Pittsburgh team, and their program is growing, and they've got a lot of juniors, like you noted earlier. So this, they will probably be a threat again. Well, this is the first time in a long time that they've actually stuck to a running program. I mean, usually Pittsburgh's kind of been one of those teams that have always had playmakers mm. and talent, but it's just been kind of loosey-goosey, okay. just go out there and play the game. Yeah. And, and, uh, and for once this year, they're finally getting disciplined, and, and it paid off. And uh, they did put up their best valiant effort tonight, but it wasn't meant to be yeah. as are most teams when they play <laughs> the De La Salle Spartans. So, folks, that's going to wrap it up here from Owen Owens Field in Concord, California. Once again, the hometown or the home team, De La Salle Spartans, the overall top dog in the state of California.
proves to be that just again, beating the Pittsburgh Pirates by a final score of 35 to 13. We'd like to thank you for joining PlayOnSports.com's coverage of Friday Night Football. Mm -hmm. And so from Concord, California, this is where I'm bringing everyone into the fold. Hans Webb, our videographer. Zach Farmer, our producer. My man, Tim Fitzgerald, my color analyst. And, of course, yours truly, the play-by-play guy, Michael Smith, also known as Mike on the Mic. We are all saying so long here from the East Bay in the 925, and we hope you'll join us next Friday night or maybe next Saturday night yeah. tomorrow where we'll be doing some <laughs> volleyball coverage in Division 6. And, of course, Thanksgiving. I'm doing the Turkey Day game. you got to be there to witness that on your destination for high school sports and Friday night football, playonsports.com. One match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. 